Hello, my name is Houston, and this is Media Mood Board. Yes, my name is Houston, and this is Media Mood Board, a weekly show about hyper-specific entertainment lists. Or at least it normally is. Last month, I took a trip to Japan with my good friend Kent, and this is a document of that experience. This is mainly intended for friends and family, or if you're looking to travel to Japan and want to have an idea of what you're getting into or some of the spots that we went, if you want any recommendations. So just some basic facts about the trip. It was a 10 day trip. We split our time between two major cities, Tokyo and Kyoto. We went mid May, which because it was after cherry blossom season, it's helped us save money on a lot of things, as well as after golden week, which is when a lot of locals travel in Japan uh, so we had a lot of cost saving in our time of year while still maintaining the really great weather. I'm about five and a half feet and don't have any food restrictions. Uh, my friend Kent is about six and a half feet and is a vegetarian. Uh, so if you are tall or are a vegetarian, um, hopefully you'll find some things in here that will inspire you if you're planning your trip. Most of the clips you're going to see here were originally posted to my Instagram stories, basically at the end of each day. So you'll see some formatting quirks of that, that everything's vertical. It's a little bit faster to fit the format of the stories. But I've added some extra things in here for this YouTube video, deeper dive things that I didn't have time to go into while we were actively on our trip. About two weeks after our trip, we got together on Zoom and recorded our reflections on the entire experience. The original plan was to have we show Tokyo and then our reflections, Kyoto and then our reflections, but turned out we talked for longer than we anticipated. So those reflections are just going to be at the end. If you see us reference something like, oh, you, you'll see it in the next section or whatever. That's just a vestigial part of that idea of splitting them up. I'll have chapters down below if you wanna to skip to certain days or just certain cities, or if you want to just go to the reflections portion. I've also done my best to list everything that we went to down in the description below in case there's anything that you're, you wanna further look into or you're looking for for your own trip. All right, well, I'll leave you alone. Um, I hope you enjoy uh, this video and have a good time. Bye. <laughs> Kent flew out to New York and from there we went to Tokyo. We had a flight early in the morning, 1.40, hopefully to get some sleep on the plane and avoid some jet lag. We got access to that lounge, we had free food, which was nice. We got seats H and K, which we thought was cute. This uh, seats were really nice, they had a lot of cool like cooking shows and stuff, and the seats could rec recline uh, almost all the way back like a lazy boy. Um, I brought a lot of stuff, but ended up just reading and sleeping. Good food on the plane. Um, here's some views that looked better in person. Uh, someone said this was the Aurora Borealis up here, but I don't think that's true, but I certainly did not fact check it. It's about a 14 hour flight and we landed in Tokyo at 5 a.m. We made it through customs and then down to the subways, which were incredibly clean, which was strange. We we're headed to Shinjuku, which is kind of a nightlife district where our first hotel was, the Hotel Gramercy, also known as the Godzilla Hotel. I'm gonna have two bird noises here. That second noise you heard was the large-billed crow, this cat-sized monster, which were gathered in groups outside the hotel. Here's a picture from the Wikipedia page where they're eating a shark. The other noise was just the sound of the crosswalk, which sounds like a bird, which I just thought was nice. Inside the Godzilla Hotel, there was this diorama. Here's Kent's notes on it. This is a warmed can of coffee I bought from a 7-Eleven, and this is the Godzilla head, which was uh, not available to go into, which is a shame. And now for a very special tour of our hotel room. got all these posters on the wall. Also, if you press this red button, it, green one. oh yeah, if you press the green one, which flips up, it does uh, sound and video, like lights appear uh -huh. and the beds vibrate. This is the bathroom, but if it also has a green button. As you can see, 
<laughs> we are in here uh, making command sure that center. we... Yeah, that's right, command center. Uh, and then uh, if you wanted to take a bath, you can do so with all of the... <laughs> some Godzilla concept art. Having such an early flight helped us sleep, but meant that we had six or seven hours to kill before we could actually check in. We stopped by this dumpling place, and I got these chili dumplings. Uh, we saw this Tex-Mex bar, which looked fun. Uh, this is a coffee place we saw that I was like, let's go in. Uh, it had this little cool, you had to go up these windy stairs, and was really cutely branded. Uh, you can see Kent really is excited about his meal here. Uh, then we went to the botanical gardens that were nearby. There was this enormous tree a lot of really just still waters and lots of just a super huge variety of plants it was so quiet and hard to believe that it really was in the middle of the city here's a fun looking turtle each section of the garden was split into themes so it was fun to explore there was even a greenhouse area which a bunch of exotic plants in it which kent knew a lot about and was able to tell me about them which was cool uh we had so still some time left so we headed over to some shops to look around and i tried not to spend all of my budget on cute stuff day one we had some time to kill before dinner so we headed out and we went to gachapon place which uh more on that in a later video afterwards we went to an arcade played some games saw some people People absolutely destroyed some rhythm games, uh, played some old school games, some fighting games. There's also a card game there, which was cool. Took a fit check by the Godzilla, which is required by law, and headed out for the restaurant. The restaurant was about 30 minutes south in Nakameguro. It was described as a hole in the wall in the neighborhood, and it had this arcane exterior. It was cement with this big wooden door. We almost missed it. Didn't take any videos, but the meal was incredible. We decided to walk off our meal, so headed a little bit north to the infamous Shibuya Scramble, which is one of the largest pedestrian crossings in the world, if not the largest. Uh, this is about at 8 o'clock at night, and you can see there's already a lot of people walking around. Uh, we decided to just explore a little bit, so we took a right and saw this, these bright lights calling us and headed down this row to a lot of just fun bars and coffee shops. Everything was open so late. We saw this Lawson's, which is a local chain. This one was a Dragon Quest themed, so I popped in and got myself something, but so many fun exteriors and branding. It was this busy at 11 at night in Shinjuku. Headed back to our hotel after a long, long day and went to bed to get ready for the next one. There are these little gachapon machines all throughout Japan on street corners. There's entire businesses dedicated to them, and we definitely got our fair share of them. Uh, one of our first days in Tokyo, we bought quite a few and unboxed them here for you to see what we got. Hello. <laughs> it's lighting. Okay, so we're going to unbox uh, or uh, in a cap <laughs> one of these, these gachapons. Unopen. Uh, so we got a mix of ones that we thought were cool and then ones that we thought were super goofy. <laughs> Uh, you want to go with your one of yours no, first? You okay. Uh, I got this at Beam, a clothing store. The images on it were little pieces of like denim clothing. Yeah, it was very uh, clear. It like looked shirts, right? Pants. Shirts, pants, and they look like you know, like kind of woven together. They yeah. look really cool. Um, all I got in it was a piece of denim, and it's got some thread in, in here, and uh, it's got a pattern. Oops, it's got a pattern for me to make my it own work. My <laughs> own shirt. So a little bit of work to do with this one. Oh man. This I uh, got at the uh, Godzilla store. And this is a little more elaborate. It is a Godzilla skeleton with a, a huge amount of like little tiny detailed pieces. <laughs> you got a rib yeah, cage. Yeah, go, go show. <laughs> yes. You got rib cage, all these individual bones. Oh, these individual pieces and more hands, tail, et cetera, et cetera. Also, completely unintentional. I was wearing my denim jacket all day today. We are right. wearing kind of the same outfit. <laughs> this is true. Oh, shit. that the same? That's true. But yeah, this is what they will look like. They had a gachapon for uh, the Suica game. If any of you guys play that, uh, me, Rosie, and our friend Jackie play this game all the time. Uh, AKA the fruit game. Um, so we'll see what little fruit that I got from it. Ah! <laughs> Honeydew! <laughs> what is this even? It's just like an enamel? That's like just an enamel thing. Is it another right? keychain or is it? No, it, 
It doesn't even connect. It's just, yeah. You know what? This is a really satisfying one to get, because if you get, you know you're close. You're, you know you're close <laughs> if you get one of these bad boys. <laughs> All right, this was from a fidget toy place. Right. So, got a lot of buttons and switches. Oh, fun. Oh, I didn't know you got a fidget one. That's cool. Yeah. Cool. And knobs and things. Also, at these gachapon places, uh, they have trash cans specifically oh, yeah. for this. They're like, hey, toss it after you open yeah. it, which is very efficient. I will say, these buttons are not bad, but they're not like. Oh, yeah, great. can you give me this a is, review? Yeah. yeah, not the greatest, I don't know, highest uh, quality. It's not terrible, but I mean, with these, you want to have like a specific feel. On average, how much are these? Um, like three bucks, basically. With these that we just got? Yeah. They were, what, three, three four hundred yen. yen? Yeah. Two, I would say two to four hundred yen. Two. Okay, yeah, so like, basically like one to one to, one to three dollars. Pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. So this is one that came from, like, how do you go? The tape on here is tricky, I'll yes. say that. So this is, uh, there are characters, these are little figurines from a uh, Moomin character. I like Moomin, I think they're cute. Oh, here we go. Hey, listen, this actually goes really in line with, I'll take the packaging off. This goes really in line with my uh, raw denim or whatever. <laughs> it's little me, it's little my sleeping in a little uh, uh, thing where you, you sew. Oh, nice. Very cute. Very good thematically. And then uh, the one I'm most excited about, uh, this one, <laughs> we have to find out what this is. Okay. These are, yeah, we, we we kept our goofiest ones last. I don't know how you could dare say this is goofy. Well, sorry. One of the various themed uh, <laughs> garbage Right, right. Containers. This one was, which garbage containers will you get? They were all garbage. <laughs> so, classic green. Very good. Uh, does not, does it open? Yeah, it does, it does open. You can oh. put real trash in there. Oh man. Pretty handy stuff. And then my final one, this uh, comes from one where, uh, see which parking space you get. <laughs> so let's see what lucky parking space we got. Oh, I have to build it, but it looks like it is one. <laughs> Look, it's the entrance with a, a bar that comes down the parking, the area right here, <laughs> right where the parking goes. Spectacular. Beautiful. Oh, oh look, and I even got the pay station. Ooh, that's really nice. Well, very nice. <laughs> well, that's, uh, do you have out of all... Oh, what if this was on the parking oh spot? My oh, my God. That's, you had to pay that's to the dream. throw away trash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, out of all the Gachapon, uh, which is your favorite? But, I got. mean, I think the one of the highest quality is obviously the Godzilla. The Godzilla one's crazy. Yeah, uh, but I mean, I mean... This is pretty great. An actual, real-life trash can. Right. I gotta say, as far as, like, useful net, or, like, things that I'm actually excited about, I really do like this Moomin one. I think mm -hmm. that was a solid purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, outside of that, uh, the trash can. Yeah, hard to beat the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> trash can is probably basically great. <laughs> but yeah, this Godzilla one. I'm gonna, it's gonna be interesting. So, um, it's worth traveling to Japan to spend... Uh, yeah, this, is, this was our full and complete summary yeah. of of uh, Japan. Okay, this is our you. review yeah, of Japan. This is our, uh, so how do you rate Japan? Uh, seven out of ten. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. If only there was more than Gashapon places. But family, that's just all Yeah, that we're going to go try to eat at a Gashapon. <laughs> <laughs> they did have, like, Gashapon things that had food in them. Not real food, but, like, various cakes and all these things. Gashapon? Good job. Good job. This is. <laughs> oh. From Shinjuku during the night to Shinjuku during the day. I woke up a little bit early, so I decided to go on a walk and grab some coffee. 
my walk took me a little bit more into the businessy district of Shinjuku. So I got to see some skyscrapers and business parks and people getting ready for work. Uh, but we'll more on that later. It was chilly and foggy and rainy and it was so nice. I went to Paul Bassett, which is this Australian chain. I got an espresso and a pistachio loaf. Pistachio, I'm not sure. Anyways, it was time to head back to meet up with Kent to have our continental breakfast. By this point, there were way more people out and about, just headed to work. It really was impressive seeing just how many people were walking around. I don't remember if I mentioned this, but Toho Cinemas is a part of our hotel. We thought about going to see the new Apes movie, but I went back inside to the hotel and met up with Kent. Downstairs was our complimentary breakfast buffet. And when buffets are good, they're so good, and this one was one of those. Uh, so many fun options to mix and match, which you never would if you wanted to... Pizza with pickled radish, you could. There's my little plate. Then we headed back upstairs, packed up, and got ready to move to the next hotel. This one was only one night because it was a special one. Before we left, we had to stop by the uh, Godzilla Cafe. I got myself this Godzilla latte. Kent got this Mothra latte. And then <laughs> we got the uh, Godzilla pancakes in the center. And then we were off to our second hotel. Our second hotel was more centrally located in Akasaka, and it's kind of a, a businessy hotel. Uh, let me show you a few fun things we saw along the way. dropped off our bags and then did a little bit more exploring. Here's some fresh puffer fish, if that's your bag. I stopped by 7-Eleven to grab a little kelp onigiri and some sunscreen because we were both starting to burn. Stopped by this fun coffee shop. Then we made our way to our destination for the rest of the day, the nerd mecca, Akihabara. We headed down to Akihabara and this subway ceiling was a little small for Kent. I would give my life for this vehicle. It's a beautiful day, and there's just so many pretty colors in Japan. We popped into a few shops before ending at, at Radio Kaiken, which is a huge figurine store. And there are just so many cool figurines from different fandoms, and nothing at all questionable. There was 10 stories to the whole thing, which is huge. You could get super specialty stuff. There were stores that just sold, opened Gachapon. There was a 112 scale Gachapon machine. Kent was looking for maybe some Godzilla figures, but didn't find anything that really struck his fancy completely. If there's anything I learned from this, this is I should read Sandland. Uh, I really like the designs. Time to eat. We headed out. We decided to do ramen. It's felt appropriately nerdy. A lot of restaurants have this plastic food display outside, which is cool. There's uh, more gachapon. Uh, here is the ramen place. It was really neat and snug. Had some veggie options for Ken, and I got a garlic tonkatsu. Another truck I would give my life for. And then we headed out to our next spot, which is Hey Arcade. We wanted to make sure that we hit an arcade on the trip and heard that this one was a good one. But first, <laughs> Kent noticed this Damashi Nation standalone store, which does some of his favorite figurines. So <laughs> we went in there for a little bit and then headed back into the arcade. We had a lot of fun here, just floors and floors of cabinets. We spent a lot of time on this like bullet hell immersive game. I'm just going to leave you with the sounds of the arcade for a little bit. Oh, Jesus! My favorite thing here was this train simulator, which you, you chose a train and then the dials and everything change on the bottom. You just sit there and you make sure the speed is going right. It's very just like <laughs> zen. Uh, it's very hard to park. Um, there was also an older version of the game, which I liked even more. All the dials and everything uh, move. Uh, it's, the seat rumbles when you go over the tracks. Um, I just loved it. <laughs> it's so specific, and um, if I had this at home, I'd be playing it all the time. Oh, 
instead of getting a big meal we decided to get small stuff i'm getting here's some grilled beef skewers <laughs> got this really big potato i'm trying to film this without showing all the uh people in costume in the back asking you to go to their maid cafes and such i found this cool mocktail bar that i was really interested in trying so we stopped by there just super chill vibes, and everything on the menu had a really unique flavor, at least what we tried, which is uh, kind of unique for mocktails, because sometimes you don't get the fun stuff if you don't get the alcohol in it, but uh, Kent got one with some wasabi in it, and I got one that was called, it was like a play on a cocktail uh, with some like roasted rosemary. We headed back to our hotel, which we hadn't checked into yet, just left our bags there earlier. The inside looks a little bit like 2001, but super comfy cozy, threw on the PJs that they had in there and went to bed. We started off the day with breakfast on the terrace, which was nice. Today was two ticketed activities, so not as much of a wandery day. First on the docket, I really wanted to go see some theater walls in Japan, so I got us some tickets to a kabuki theater. Big costumes, big performances, kind of a mix between opera and professional wrestling. Such a pretty venue with such great colors, as is to be expected. They had an English guide, which is really interesting. You put it in your ear, and it didn't translate word for word what they were saying on stage, but it told you historical context or basically the gist of what was happening. So it allowed you to really like not be distracted by the dialogue itself and instead the performances, which is what this whole thing's about because it's so exaggerated. So that the way that you buy tickets for Kabuki Theater is you buy for a block of time, uh, about four hours, or you can do a single act same day. This month's theme was a tribute to a specific duo of actors, and so all the plays were from their like favorites, basically. We went to the matinee, which had two one acts and then a three act, and each of the plays was separated by an intermission. The first one was a more poetic, uh, moral tale from the 1700s called Sumo and Mandarin Duck. It's about two sumo wrestlers uh, the evil one loses and out of spite tries to poison the other one with the blood of a duck that he kills and then the spirit of that duck and that duck's wife come kill him all the sets are, are really incredible things flapping down to reveal new sets there's a, a band on stage playing this traditional music the dialogue is spoken very wailingly big quick changes uh, a much very slow and fluid. That first play was from the late 1700s. This one was from even earlier. It's an adventure comedy called The Whisker Tweezers about a paranormal detective. This did not have like the quick changes and the big set production. It was all set in one location that the previous one did, but it had a very modern sensibility as far as its storytelling. It was very funny. It had these uh, like big props that were used. The case that he was investigating was this uh, woman who was supposed to get married and she called it off. He went to go see why and it was because she had gotten this curse where her hair would float uh, up into the sky if she ever took like her hat off basically. And so he was trying to figure out why that happened and her hair was like a bunch of stage hands would pick up this big wig and like fl fling it around and there'd be like he would, there'd be things that are floating and uh, like a head gets chopped off and things like that. And the third play that we saw was both the longest and the newest. It was made over a hundred years after the other two in the late 1800s. And you can really see those modern sensibilities come through. First act, we're seeing kind of a traditional comedic kabuki play, kind of like what we've seen before. Then there's a fourth wall break where someone drunkenly comes out of the audience and tries to stop the show. A chivalrous civilian also comes up and stops the altercation. The civilian is kind of a Robin Hood type guy. He's good at the sword and, and like humble and a champion of the people. The chivalrous guy ends up getting invited to an obvious trap at the samurai leader's house. And then the third act ends in a really big altercation that includes a lot of stage combat. All the props in this were cool, all the staging was cool, I love the stage combat, and it had a very nuanced story and more realistic, naturalistic performances, so it was uh, very engaging. Each show had about a 20 or 30 intermission in between each one, and you could go downstairs and get some souvenirs or, you know, buy some coffee or pastries or any of the like. Uh, there's these cute uh, alligator, like, 
pork sandwiches. There was a gachapon, of course. Got this red bean paste and butter treat, and then also this cat paw with lemon curd filling. It was so good, that cat paw. Good lord. I'm just doing this because I'm really impressed by the intuitiveness of a lot of stuff in Japan. This is their countdown timer. You see there's four bars there. That's how much longer until, and now three. Um, there's a lot of things in there that even if you don't read the language that are just built in, um, like the subway lines are all color coded. And, and when you go up the escalators, they're colored like the subway color line and things like that. Anyways, on to our next stop, which is a uh, team planet slab. Wait, team lab planets. Yeah, that's right. You've heard of infinity rooms. Well, team lab planets is an infinity mansion. Outside was this, uh, digital art thing where you downloaded an app and, uh, caught this fire. Uh, so basically this is a multi-story, uh, sensory thing. You have to take off your shoes. Here's the entryway. They, they have like carpet and then they surprise you with different textures throughout. It felt very much like a, <laughs> like a walking simulator. Uh, if you've ever played any of those video games, the first one was this kind of walking up water. The second one was this kind of like weird bouncy space. Then of course you need to have a little, uh, infinity, uh, goes into the distance, a light room. So this one was really cool though, because it had an end point where you reach the end zone and then you could control actually what was happening with the lights. Uh, we got more water here this time, milky white. It was a little disturbing felt like you're in cereal uh, but they had all these projections um, there are koi fish projected swimming in here and uh, one ran into me and I yelped because I did not notice it and thought that it was real this is a room of large bouncing balls with diffused light this is a big dome that you lay in the middle and stare up at these projections uh, afterwards there's a garden section this is a bunch of like metallic eggs uh they can all move um here's us in the alien ghibli movie uh, then there was uh the floating flowers which looked really cool using that infinity room it smelled really nice just with like some organic material instead of like led lights or whatever lots of people just sitting down in here it was, all in all uh, a good time Team Lab Planets was a little out of the way, but we got this really beautiful train ride back. Uh, there's a restaurant that Kent wanted to eat at uh, back in Shibuya, so we ended up back over there around dinner time, so it was as busy as you might expect. Um, I saw this rock climbing cafe, which was funny. It's exactly how it sounds. Uh, ended up the place was closed, uh, so we went to this curry place instead, which, whoops, I ate it before uh, I could take a picture. It was really, really good. Uh, then we headed back to our hotel to finish off the night. It was a long day with a lot of stuff, so we ended up just grabbing a sake from this, like, British pub that was blasting uh, ACDC YouTube. Coming to you live from Daikanyama Tsutaya Books, or T-Side, named one of the 20 most beautiful bookstores in the world um, by a couple of online polls. <laughs> um, it's supposed to be shaped like a tree. It's enormous. There's... Uh, all you'll see in a, a later video, but um, was busy today, so I did not edit the video to go up in the morning, so it's gonna go up now. Um, have fun. It was actually last night, and uh, I just went to bed. I went home and I didn't <laughs> do voiceovers for any event, so I am on the train to Kyoto now, and I'm doing the voiceover uh you're supposed to be pretty quiet on these things um like no one's talking i'm pretty much the only noise that's happening on this train so i try to be quiet so I had to use some noise canceling and stuff like that to uh make my voice audible so if you hear uh if it sounds a little odd uh, that's why okay start of the day at this cozy coffee shop. I'd seen it across from our hotel and I'd been curious about it and I ended up going there a ton. Uh, here's a drip coffee and a sugar donut. Here are some firefighters. Uh, and then we headed off to our first uh, stop of the day. Uh, but before that, uh, my friend Jason had asked me to try the milk tea from the vending machine. So Jason, this one's for you. It was very good.
Uh, first up is Small World, a miniature museum. Uh, think a train set, but if they built an entire civilization. Uh, yeah, so you're in for a ton of just like super nerdy stuff today. Um, so uh, hang in there. So both Kent and I ended up absolutely loving this place. Um, <laughs> when we came in, I was so flabbergasted by it, I'm trying to figure out what it was that like I did not do a good job of doing an establishing shot. So sorry about that, but uh, I'm just gonna show you some vignettes from throughout the place. Each room was rather large and kind of separated by themes, and they had these interactive buttons all throughout, which is kind of a where's Waldo for some sort of interaction or movement that would happen and the rest of the space. And then you'd kind of, you know, zoom out and, and look at it from a, a greater distance. There were so many funny little stories and just like very, there's a great sense of humor. Uh, they would incorporate sci-fi elements at points. This is like a, a futuristic space delivery service. This is uh, some cosmic sausages, uh, a warp gate, and uh, a child who has a bad idea. If the last room was sci-fi, this is fantasy. We have these snowy mountains which lead into this woody valley. There's trains and tree houses and people building flying machines and giant cats. Uh, there was a thing that said, uh, oh, here's some baby dragons. There's a thing that said there were animal police that were protecting the animals. And there were these, like, there were these mech that were, like, climbing the mountains. So, like, here's a steamboat. Uh, they also had a giant turtle with a city on its back. They also had these more, you know, naturalistic looking settings. Just full of fun surprises and interactions. And even though it did not feel as all in one world as the sci fi room did, each one of the spaces felt like it had its own ecosystem, its own rules, its own life to it. And it was really, really cool to see the worlds that thought out. The next room was completely non-interactive and was more of a gallery of different artists that they employed and their, um, their work outside of the facility. Um, these are basically like sketches. They'd have like kind of little diary entry names. This is one of one of the creators yeah, in his life. It's just for this is one with a working TV in it. Um, it was really interesting to see where the different inspirations came from. Some people are obviously more inspired by like dollhouses. Other people are more inspired by like train sets and there was all different scales and it just felt like a really interesting way to keep track of your life and your interest. It felt like a sketchbook but in 3D and that was really, really cool to see. Honestly, super inspiring. And when they're not trying to create an entire universe, an entire world, it's interesting to see creating a specific tone and setting on a smaller scale. The next room also was uh, into reality in creating a giant airport uh, with uh, working planes and day-night cycles. Uh, each one of these planes would land and then taxi from there into a spot, and uh, it was just a bit crazy to watch. Um, during the night, it, everything lit up differently. They also had this really cool control room aspect where there's cameras throughout the rest of the facility uh, that you could see at full scale. They had its own waiting room. It was really being really playful with like, okay, how else can we like mess with the idea of scale? Of course, the airport itself was super busy and looked really cool during the night cycle. Just an interesting mix of where it was dense, where it wasn't dense. Oh, and of course there's a gotcha pond. And then on to the even nerdier room. Now, I haven't watched Evangelion in a long time, but it was really cool to see this miniature world of a cohesive story from a fictional universe. On the walls were screenshots where they'd drawn some of the inspiration uh, from literal scenes in the show to reference. There were little Easter eggs throughout, characters you could find. In the show, the place where they live is constantly under attack by aliens, and whenever that happens, the city is built to go underground to protect the citizens. So they actually had that functional here with the day-night cycle and everything.
the final stop in Small Worlds was their fabricator area. You could take classes on how to do this stuff, but basically where they built all their miniatures. They had big 3D printers and a place where they built the clothes and stuff like that. Me and Ken decided to get our own miniatures based on 3D prints of ourselves. Even the food was small. Then we headed out to Kinza, which is this fancy shopping district, uh, to illustrate it. Uh, there was a line around the block for Cartier. Um, there's this old bookstore that I want to stop by. All the covers are just so cool. Uh, this is Three Penny Opera, uh, for instance. Uh, then we went to this pancake place we've been wanting to go to, Happy Pancake. We sat down and were excited to eat. Uh, and then my phone died, and I forgot that I did not bring my power bank. Uh, so I, I asked Ken, hey, can you shoot the rest of this for me on your phone? And so the rest will be presented in Kentovision. So here's Kent showing him his bank. Oh boy, I guess it, they owe him money. Um, these are really like souffle-ish. They're very eggy. Uh, mine had like grapefruit on it. It was just like one of the best bites of the trip. Um, this is just a really tasty roll. It had some uh, honey from New Zealand. And then we are on our way to Tokyo Tower. Um, we were gonna go downstairs to do this red, it's kind of like a VR arcade type thing that Kent found. Here's the entrance, and then there was also this, like, felt like an SAT game, <laughs> where you had to do math or, like, f match the pattern, and then here's, you know, a lot of these tricked me into exercising, which I didn't appreciate. This is like that game where you have to get in the right shape. Uh, the, yes, uh, there was also robots. After we finished with everything in a Tokyo Red, it was nighttime and it was time for us to go up into Tokyo Tower. Before we did, we had some dinner. Um, Kent had some crispy potatoes and I had these uh, octopus balls. Uh, that was me accidentally dropping my book bag. Then it was our turn and we went up in the tower. It was really cute. All of the attendants were all wearing matching costumes. It felt very Disney. Uh, you Even before you got up to this beautiful view, you went into a room where there were... Um, fake photos of the founders of this place that were videos and they would like talk to each other in this fake library. Everyone, oh look at the TikTok dancers. Where? In the parking lot. That's so funny. I love it. That's so cute. After a day of looking at miniatures, we were able to see Tokyo itself in miniature and then headed back home to the hotel. This wasn't planned, but there were like three parades going on in Tokyo one of the weekends that we were there. So we chose the one that sounded the most fun and decided to go for it. Uh, basically, there were people carrying shrines around in the street and people would like fight to be the ones to be get to carry it. And there was drums and dancing and music and things like that. <laughs> We were worried about being able to find it, uh, but turns out as soon as we got off the subway, it was there. There were so many people and just it was a super fun vibe and atmosphere. Um, I'll just let the ambient music uh, set the tone. <laughs> We followed the parade around for a little bit and then I grabbed some tea to refresh. They also had these like little small shrines throughout. Uh, and then we are on our way to the big shrine that was nearby. This is Sensoji. It's uh, one of Tokyo's oldest temples. 
as well as one where just a lot of events uh, go on. Uh, it, it was a gorgeous opening gate. This is one of the guardians of the temple there. In the lead up, there's a huge crowd of people in a bunch of shops selling food. Uh, we got these little uh, red bean paste things. Uh, I just thought these uh, little guys were cute. Uh, there's all these cool masks, just lots of different vendors. Uh, here's a cute illustration uh, telling the story of some of the gods. And then we got up to the main gate. The entrance to the shrine was just as pretty as the main gate. It had this big pagoda next to it. And each one also had these giant uh, god-sized shoes. Um, when we were there, the, uh, the, the traveling shrine it also made its way there. <laughs> Next to the shrine, there were all these different vendors cooking up all of this fresh food on grills. It just smelled <laughs> incredible. Here's some a fruit game themed like mozzarella stick thing. Um, there's some duck bulky. There's some kids fishing for goldfish. I got some salted sweet potato. And this is the inside of the shrine. There are many ways to offer your prayers to the gods here. You could pay to get, have incense, put in this incense bowl, which you then waft on yourself. It smelled so good. There's also these metal cylinders, which they're clanging, will fill the, the entire space. Uh, you shake it, you get a stick out. It gives you a good or bad fortune. You could keep it or tie it up to dispel it. This is melon bread with meringue. This is a candy strawberry, and it was so good that I couldn't stop getting strawberry stuff. This is a strawberry soda and even McDonald's was getting in on the strawberry trend. Afterwards, we walked past some more shops into the only dirty subway I'd seen in Japan. Though even here it felt like intentional and kind of underground and not actually dirty. And you know this ramen place is really good, right? After the shrine, we headed through the enormous Tokyo Wino Station on our way to the Tokyo National Museum. Now, there, we went to Ueno Park, which is also huge, huge, huge. There was so much greenery, a lot of stuff I, I, we didn't even get a chance to see. Uh, here, here's a bird uh, taking a bath. Um, this place was really big. There was basically three different, look at this poodle, there were three different museums on the same park. One's a, there's a zoo. There is the National Museum, and this is the other museum is this direction. Um, there's some rockabillies uh, kids dancing, and this is the exterior of the National Museum. Look at how curated that looks. Isn't that insane? The entrance was equally gorgeous. You walked up these stairs. The first exhibit was this collection of tiny pendants, which held tobacco pouches on uh, samurai's belts. This is a carriage that the emperor had been ridden in. Uh, here is uh, some poetry. This is a historical document that's in a room where they rotate national treasures. Here's some poetry. And here are some early prints and poetry and a mix here is a here's some tea uh ceremony uh tools and here is a, a samurai outfit this is a sword a samurai sword i loved how worn and like lived in everything felt it made it just feel so real here's a helmet where they wanted god to come in and possess them and here's a samurai who dressed like a bear to try and get the bear's powers a quick tangent about this poetry. Um, I just think it's so cool and just such an interesting peek into how this kind of stuff affects people that these are like snippets of poetry and some of them were like different, like matched together from different, like, you know, it's just a couple stanzas, uh, but they were set in the scroll by itself and you would say, okay, I'm going to read this thing. And sometimes these were from master storytellers, sometimes these were from religious people, but just the idea that you would unscroll this thing to read this, just this one way that someone has chosen to articulate themselves, and for that to be so effective that you pass it on, that's just like incredibly cool to me. They had some really beautiful full-scale uh, screen paintings, uh, and this is getting to my, uh, one of my favorite parts, which are these little like scrolls and, and vignettes, these really long stories and these like really impressionistic uh, paintings. Uh, they also had kind of like scientific drawings and things like that. This is a map of Japan from really early on. 
this is uh, ooh, this is these are some really early prints that they really focus on like kabuki and things like that. So they would draw um, performers uh, in their character roles, which is really interesting. And here's some of the woodblock uh, things that they would use to press the ink on. There's really cool kimonos. This one has some virtues, quote unquote, on it. And then here's some work inspired by Western art. There were also really cool interactive parts of the museum. This used a camera to pop up items and then you could uh, interact with them. My favorite was this row of 3D printed pots, all with different textures from glossy to rough. And you'd pick them up and on the screen in front of you, you could rotate them in your hands and feel them. And it would tell you facts about them. Uh, it was cool that they were one-to-one -to, -one to the real thing. They also had this special exhibit about the Pure Land, which is really, really good. And then the museum closed down. It was rainy and the, <laughs> these giant birds were out. Uh, and so we decided to head back to the hotel. Um, I saw another car that I would kill for. Uh, we were getting ready for a meal. It was a, a restaurant that Kent had found and made us reservations for. After getting a little snazzed up, we uh, left the hotel and headed into all the fancy places we've been to are in just like neighborhoods. But this is Tudor Hink Tranquility. Uh, Ken's a vegetarian. It's hard to find vegetarian stuff in Japan. And this was a multi course place that he found. So uh, we were both really excited to try it. Um, afterwards, we were really tired from a walking all day. So we decided to just head back to our hotel and call it there. One really fun quirk of the Japanese rail system was each stop had its own specific jingle, which lets you know when the doors to the train were closing. Um, I picked a few of my favorites here uh, just to show you how they sound. It was our last day in Tokyo, and so we both took a free day, a solo day, just to do whatever we wanted on our own. Um, I did some uh, souvenir shopping, but I'm not going to show you because they were probably watching this video. <laughs> um, so first I went to Rapanji, which is kind of a shopping district area, and uh, went through some neighborhoods here to get there. And I was super excited to look at some shops, including uh, this one that I love online called The Rio McCoys. They do kind of Americana reproductions and things like that. Um, lots of like uh, Army Navy or 50s style stuff. If you're unfamiliar, I'd almost describe it as like if Ralph Lauren had a Japanese uh, outpost of its brand. I did buy something. I'll show you that at my haul when I get back. So after doing a little shopping for myself, a little shopping for other people, I just was walking around. Uh, I heard from my friend Jason there's a good tonkatsu place in between kind of Rapanji and Harajuku. So I walked through some neighborhoods to get there, uh, but unfortunately it was <laughs> it was closed uh, the other two days of the trip that I'd be in Tokyo. So I happened to have a coffee and donut place that I had on my list nearby, and. Uh, man, uh, this is probably the best coffee I've ever had. Also, I ordered just a plain donut, and it very much was plain. There was no sugar or anything on it, uh, but it was a really chill, great spot. Uh, I sat there and kind of decided what I wanted to do next, and then I headed into the depths of Harajuku. Uh, this is a mini pig cafe. Um, I was tempted to go <laughs> to go in and, and pet some mini pigs, but this place is so crowded and so many like weird, cute shops and cute signage. 
the while in the coffee shop, I'd seen that there was another branch of that same place that was closed, a little further north. So I hopped on the train and then uh, traveled to it. It turned out it was at the bottom of kind of like a shopping center. Here's some yummy looking cherries, some good sushi. It was like a grocery store slash, you know, place where people are selling their food that they cooked and things like that. So I got a uh, grilled uh, or fried prawn and I was Ooh. feeling a little disappointed that I didn't get to get the fresh version. So I got myself on a waiting list for a restaurant from that same friend uh, for some good udon. I went home, there's my little treats for the day, this is a Japanese peach, and here's my <laughs> reaction, I heard they're supposed to be good. Holy oh. Then it was time for udon! Uh, Kent wants me to let you know that he went there first, and then he <laughs> sent me the QR code too, so that I didn't have to wait in line for a super long a time, but I still had to wait in there line for an hour. Um, so this is them making it fresh. I got here, I got a cold uh, noodle with uh, some yuzu and beef, and then uh, I made my way to go meet up with Kent. We were rendezvousing at a cool bookstore, uh, so I just made my way to the other side of town to meet up with Kent. On the way there, I walked past this pet shop, and yes, I'm dedicating a whole slide to these tiny, <laughs> tiny animals. And then I made it to our rendezvous point, the final stop of the night, Tutsaya Books. It's pretty just like a bookstore for adults, and it's kind of got everything you need. Are you looking for contemporary magazines? Old school art magazines. Zines with photos in them. Uh, indie press photo books. Are you looking for a car? Maybe an indie zine with some merch. Blind date with a book? What about literal art? Feeling peckish? Head upstairs to a full cocktail bar and restaurant and with uh, vintage books all around it. Let's say you don't want a cocktail or a conversation, you just want to be quiet and work. Well, they do have a co-working space. It's right next to the children's book section, a curated music selection, as well as just n nerdy stuff. There's also a Starbucks and yeah, it's a good one. Do you want English language books? Maybe Japanese lit. What about some sheep or home goods? How about an exhibit displaying memorabilia from the Harmony Corinne penned movie, Kids? And don't worry, if you do get hurt, there is a clinic on the third floor. Just a final few words on this bookstore before I wrap up for the day. It's supposed to be one of the 20 most beautiful bookstores in the world, and it's kind of based on a tree. It's supposed to kind of branch out from the center. I did end up buying some zines, but here are some books that I thought about buying that I ended up putting back. This spy who's a squirrel really called to me, but I didn't get it. The book on the right called I'm a Cat. The book on the left, I'm also a cat. This was a cool collection of Japanese stories that had English language on the left and then the original Japanese on the right. I just thought that was a really cool format to read it in. And then uh, we headed out, it was, a, it was a nighttime obviously, and uh, back to the hotel. This afternoon we're leaving for Kyoto from Tokyo and there's a shrine across the street which I'd been meaning to go to so I took the opportunity to have a morning walk at the shrine. There was this really beautiful long staircase here which was very meditative and a really nice way to just start the day. I headed back down, got myself a little grocery store food and then we headed out. We were taking the bullet train, so we got our tickets, and this is a guy playing a 3DS in the wild. Uh, and then we hopped on the train. It was a really pleasant ride. It was about two and a half hours. There's a view of Mount Fuji, very far away, but it was still cool to get to see. As Tokyo became Osaka, became Kyoto, the buildings and atmosphere around started feeling older. Uh, Kyoto has a, a large amount of pre-war buildings still um on account of not being bombed during world war ii uh we made it there and we had these little matcha cookies which is really nice um we are staying in what's called a ryokan which is basically a traditional uh bed and breakfast in japan we ordered an uber to take us up the mountain and as the roads got windier and we went higher and higher up it was like we were going further and further back in time into a, a world of old buildings and greenery we reached our ryokan and both me and kent just were floored by how pretty this place is 
uh, these videos really don't even do it justice. It felt so cool and honestly surreal to be there. Uh, the whole place is very traditional, uh, really attentive staff. This little room tour, traditional room, uh, you take off your shoes. The floors are super soft. Um, it did have a Western style uh, bathroom and it had this sink over here and it has a shower in here. And then one of my favorite parts of this whole thing is outside here we have an outdoor bath. The water is at a constant 40 degrees Celsius. It feels incredible. I ended up taking a bath there later that night, surrounded by nature, illuminated only by moonlight. First thing they do when you get there is they breathe some green tea. So drank that, threw on some outdoor slippers, and we went exploring. It truly felt like a place that time had forgotten. Like if an entire town had been raptured and the, the town left pristine, that's what it looked and, and felt like. I'm just gonna leave you with some uh, images from the space with some sounds I'd recorded from the parade the other day. Dinner was absolutely incredible. We had like at least one Michelin star meal uh, on our itinerary, and this was just as good. They served it to you in your room, course by course, each uh, traditional uh, recipe or type of food. This is a broth that was cooked on paper in front of you. you can heat it up with the egg some and then poured it in. And here's me looking like a total dork in a yukata with a belly full of sashimi. And I'm just gonna close up this vlog with the sounds of our night stroll. See you tomorrow. Um, Rhino. That's right, more Ryokan outdoor content. Uh, we only had a, a night and a morning there, so we really tried to soak it in. Look how clear that water is. Uh, this morning stroll was so nice. The sun was peeking through the trees and we were able to take some paths that we hadn't before. We think this is maybe some natural way to heal some burning on the trees or something like that. But uh, regardless, it was a really nice way to open the day. Kent pointed out how green the trail was, made it feel really you know, uh, untouched. Um, uh, we made our way back for breakfast. Here's another example of the still water. Look how it just like immediately, as soon as it gets the waterfall, it's moving, but here it's like completely still really surreal to see. Um, but what a dreamland. Uh, we headed back to the Ryokan for our breakfast. Unsurprisingly, the breakfast was incredible. Uh, we ate this in a communal space with all the other people who stayed at the Ryokan, and it's a testament to their service. We thought there were maybe four other people there, but there was a lot more. They just do a really good job of making you feel like it's a private experience. We headed back uh, down to the city and took a train to Kyoto Station, where we dropped off our bags, so we didn't have to lug them around, uh, onto the next spot on our list, which was Nara. Uh, this uh, helpful attendant reminded me to wash my hands in the bathroom, and we hopped on a bus to Nara, land of the deer. So Nara is this park where all these deer just like chill out, and they're not scared of humans at all, 
and they just run around. And I was wondering how close we could get to the deer or how far we had to walk to get to them. But they're just right there. Uh, they interact with people. You can pet them, etc. And how that works is you buy these cookies, which the deer uh, absolutely love. They are very aggressive. They're not scared of getting up in your face and asking for more cookies. Um, just as an example, you can see here, this is what it looks like when you approach a deer without a cookie. And then here is with the cookies. I could have spent basically the whole day there. It was obviously so cute. And the cookies, there's like 10 for a dollar. So it's, you, you, I definitely dropped some coin getting a bunch of cookies. Oh, another thing about them, uh, they bow uh, to get your attention. And if they want something, they're asking for cookies. Because they're in Japan, they know that bowing is the polite thing to do. Um, apparently, I wasn't supposed to touch them, actually. Here's a bunch of things that they can, <laughs> they can do to you. Um, and they, they like to pose for pictures. I think they knew that if they got, uh, got there, they'd get some treats. Everybody's wearing cute deer merch and they had this deer mascot which was eating a cookie uh but that's not the only reason we were there connected to nara is the todaiji temple which is one of the largest wooden structures in the world and it houses this enormous metal buddha which was built by over two million people over the course of its construction it was constructed in the 700s and in one lecture i listened to they compared it to kind of ser serving the same purpose as the olympic games and in part showing the power and the advancement of Japan. Here are two guardians outside that guard the deity whose temple this is um, erected for. Here are two uh, replica hands of the Buddha we're about to see. Here's a turtle. Um, it really was impressive in scope and awe-inspiring in a way that only these large structures can be. As you can see, the temple is huge. And just to put things in scale, the Buddha almost reaches the top. Outside, there's this uh, cool lantern, which is also of historical value. And here is the doorway. You walk in and are just greeted with this incredible sculpture here. It's just hard to believe that anyone could ever construct that. Even at the bottom were these lotus leaves that had tales of history that were huge and ornate. On the left and right side, there were two other massive Buddhas that were just... Uh, tiny in comparison. The temple has been through a lot. There's an earthquake which knocked over the Buddha's head. It's been set on fire a couple of times during wars. And so he even had the miniatures here for kind of the different versions of it look like. Here's another scale thing. They're one of the uh, beams you could crawl through to from one side to the other and the school kids were loving it. We were regretfully saying goodbye to Nara. So before we left, I grabbed some food. This was a Wagyu beef stand you pick the cuts you want and they blow torched it right there in front of you um, i didn't want to miss this opportunity so they were uh, unsurprisingly very very good had a little wasabi on there also had some of the best ice cream of my life so we hopped on the subway back up to kyoto to the fushimi inari uh, and a day full of magical sightings this one fit right in it's known for its massive amount of tori gates the Fushimi Inari Shrine is dedicated to this god who um, has these fox familiars that whisper your wishes to him. So there are foxes everywhere, which is really cute. It's dedicated to business and, and well-being. And so while I was walking through here, I tried to keep kind of, you know, uh, my life in mind and what life's work and and business and what that means. And all of these shrines, just imagine walking through, you'd think there's a lot, and like it's hours and hours of these. Uh, and it's just really meditative. I know I've said that before, but it really does put you in a place and you feel overwhelmed by the amount of nature and the amount of work that put into these and how they kind of meld together. There are these different densities. Some are really dense and some are loose. Maybe contemplative is the right word, but it really puts you in a good headspace if you allow it to. The whole thing is this journey up a mountain, up these steps, through the gates, and intermittently there are these shrines which are dedicated to prayers and wishes which you can contribute to or 
pray towards. You can put your prayers up there for the priest to pray on. Um, and there's a lot of abstract imagery too. Here are some foxes. One is just a rock. Here is an old tree stump that looks like a praying person. You can put your hands on where you've been hurt. There is a boars and monkeys about, so they were warning There us. were multiple stops along the trail that were for pilgrims going up the mountain that involved ornate sculptures and different things with water. Uh, here is a, that one was a dragon. This is a fox. Uh, here's another fox listening. And at the very end of the trail, there was this constantly running water into the static bucket. We reached the top and there was a shrine up there to the god itself that was concealed so you could look it in the eyes. On the way back down the mountain, you're confronted with the backs of the Tory gates, which are inscribed with names you hadn't seen on the way up. They were just plain. And all of these are the names of the contributors who offered money to help build this space. It really gave you a sense of community and like you were part of something big. And then you're confronted with this view of the city to see everything that the community has built together, except for this crow, who is still scary. Uh, but it was just a very spiritual, for lack of a better term, experience. I know, shocker for a shrine, but it really did feel magical. I know I've talked about this before on this vlog, but the colors used in public spaces here are just so, so interesting and things I'm not used to. These shrines are a vermilion color, which is m meant to have some magical properties, but even that color itself is a color I don't really see in public spaces. In other places I visited, these greens that are incorporated, it just, you know, it feels so interesting and gives such a distinct flair to um, Japan as a whole, all the all the different color palettes that they use, which is something that's hard to kind of put uh, its finger on. Also, uh, I just wanted to note how interesting, me and Kent were talking about comparing this to Western style shrines like uh, cathedrals and things like that, and how some things work with nature and some things are meant to stand against nature to show control, and that's that form of worship, but just really interesting stuff. After a very full day, we headed back to Kyoto Station and picked up our luggage, which was super easy to do. More than any other transition between hotels, though, we did run into lots of stairs. It kept getting more and more extreme, uh, but here it is. Uh, it was our last stay. It had this like robo check-in. There wasn't even someone at the front desk, which was weird. We were hungry uh, from walking uh, like 30,000 steps up the stairs. So we headed to this dumpling place nearby that had a line around the corner. We were one of the last groups to get in before the kitchen closed and had some really cozy dumplings before bed. This is the only one of our hotels that did not have a continental breakfast. Kent was skipping breakfast that morning, so I set out to search for something to eat. I went to this one place, and it was closed, and then ended up at this another place called Minato, which I forgot to take a video of the outside. It was the cutest little spot run by this older woman, and her and her friend were watching this video on bear attacks, um, but... Uh, they had these Mickey Mouse like menus. It was like a, a scrapbook almost with like Polaroids, little handheld fans, magazines with half finished crosswords, these gauzy uh, window drapes with little bears holding them. And she just sat back there and cooked it on a single grill. Like it, it felt so homemade. After breakfast, I went to go meet up with Kent. On our Kyoto leg of the trip, the city itself kind of acted as a central hub for day trips. Today's day trip, Iwaji Island, uh, which had uh, several nerdy exhibits on it, That uh, one in particular that we were interested in seeing. So we took a, a train down and then hopped in an Uber. There's a Ferris wheel. Uh, and it was just so lush and uh, it uh, way bigger than we thought it would be, too. It had a Naruto, a Shinchan, a God Godzilla, uh, Dragon Quest, um, I guess which one of those we went to, um, but I didn't even know about this Dragon Quest thing, um, it was really, it apparently is like a full video game, like you go inside and do side quests and fight bosses and stuff, but that's not what we were there for, we were there for Godzilla. Nigod, or National Awaji Island Institute of Godzilla Disaster, is a Godzilla theme park on Awaji Island. It has games, museums, and food, and notably, a zip line. They show you a bespoke a film beforehand of how this happened, and then they lead you out to attack the Godzilla, who has been tra trapped underground. Um, so we uh, harnessed up in the zip line. Uh, they 
allowed Kent to put his phone in a little ziplock around his neck, but as you can see, it uh, <laughs> it didn't really stay straight. Uh, so you get the side view of us ziplining into Godzilla's mouth here. Uh, afterwards, uh, the next mission is to shoot the Godzilla cells. So you get a gun and you shoot it. And then, of course, we had to take some really humiliating pictures with uh, Godzilla afterwards just to really, you know, show him who's boss. The opening video and the uh, zip line would have been enough fun on their own to be worth admission, but they really had actually a pretty good uh, museum with lots of models and statues from different parts of Godzilla history and films. Uh, a lot of these statues were actually like really cool. Um, they also had early designs, um, early concept art, and also some costumes um, from the movies. Uh, the, this is one specifically for the Awaji Island <laughs> uh, video that we saw. Um, just some really cool sculpts in here, some cool villains, and a version of every uh, existing Godzilla version. Though Ken said there were some holes in it, so take that uh, with what you will. This one's probably my favorite design. There are plenty of opportunities to take photos of how much of a chump we thought Godzilla was. Um, I <laughs> I wore this outfit specifically because I was trying to look like Beat Takashi. So I tried adopting this, like, <laughs> that tough guy pose. Uh, we also, there was actually, we didn't know, but a, a professional photo spot at the end where we got a picture of ourselves and then with a uh, Godzilla on a set. Uh, we misunderstood, though, and so only one of us got the picture on the set. Oh, they also recorded a video. We stopped by the gift shop and then went to the cafe where they were selling Godzilla-themed food. There's a Shin Godzilla hot dog. I got some noodles and a Godzilla uh, pastry. Kent got the King Ghidorah uh, meal and then this um, cake. Uh, we both also got the Godzilla beer. Uh, and then it turned out there wasn't a, a super easy way to get back to <laughs> the, the train station Uh and we had an appointment for a dinner, so we took a little walk. It took about 30 minutes to get to the bus stop, and uh, from there, we headed out to our dinner for the night, which was back in Kyoto. Uh, only little did we know, um, oh, and there's Rick, I think. Uh, little did we know that both our phones were about to die, and uh, neither one of it, us mentioned it to the other. So halfway back to Kyoto, both of our phones were dead. Both not having our phones is especially inconvenient when we're trying to make a dinner reservation in a town we're unfamiliar with where we barely speak the language and can't read it. So uh, when, once we back to, got back to Kyoto Station, uh, we bought a like phone charger. We went to a, a portable phone charging station and then drew out a hand map. Oh, Also, because our uh, hotel has a robo um, attendant, uh, you just have a key code to enter in. You don't actually uh, uh, have an attendant or anything to help you, so we had to write down the code too to even get back into the hotel room. Despite having low battery, I still needed to take a video of Boo Boo Park, um, and then uh, here is the restaurant. It was such a nice place. I really loved the food here. Kent found this place. Um, this was These were some like just fully fried fish that I had in a sushi roll. It was incredible. Um, and then we finished off the night watching some Japanese game show about wacky bowling. Kent brought his camera on the trip and pulled it out for the Kyoto leg of our journey. I wanted to include in here a couple of images from his camera roll.
It was our last full day in Japan, and just like our last full day in Tokyo, our last full day in Kyoto, we each had solo days. Ken decided to spend his day at the Arashiyama Bamboo Forest, and I decided to take a slow day just around the neighborhood. Uh, I started off with this small little coffee shop up these stairs run by this husband and wife duo. They handmade their own filters and served their coffee in little teacups. That's all they sold. Uh, there was no electronics or anything, so it was just a nice little in-your-body way to start the morning. And then I went out and went for a stroll. I ended up at Keninji Temple. It's this Zen temple, the one of the oldest ones in Kyoto. It was really beautiful grounds and kind of drew me in. So this one is a Zen temple. You had to take off your shoes to get in, and it was so soft and, and relaxing, the, the wood floorboards, which I wasn't expecting. It was a beautiful space with all these large paintings in it. I especially love this one, which is the story of these kids uh, getting on a raft and getting into some mischief. The architecture of the place was stunning, and it really did promote this sense of calm and uh, exploration as well, paying attention to the small things. Everywhere you looked, every angle you looked at, there was a different window or frame to look at the space in, and it all culminated in the center garden. The original plan was to read a book outside the Imperial Palace, but instead I got sucked into looking at these rocks for an hour. Uh, every angle from it was so engaging, and with the mixture of the beautiful weather and the, the soft wood and these mesmerizing images, I just, it really just, the time just slipped away. It really was so relaxing, which I think is part of like the Zen experience. Here's a painting of like the heavens and the earth, and this is that represented in, in shapes here. Uh, the main hall, you can see this raked rock garden. Entering the main hall is just as serene and all-encompassing of your senses, at least for me, as the rest of the space was. There was this huge dragon painting and these really beautiful, warm, holy statues. I think it really did make me feel what Zen kind of means. This dragon mural was added recently. It was painted inside a school gym Gymnasium, which is just such interesting color. Now, I could have stayed there all day, but I was meeting up with Kent later to go to a museum, and there was a shop I wanted to stop by first. So I cut through historic Gion, which is normally kind of a, a party district, and there's like geisha walking around and stuff like that, but um, not in the day, which was fine. Uh, I got some shaved ice with some plum on top. I accidentally dropped it, and uh, Everybody in the restaurant gasped. <laughs> um, as I made my way to Ichibara Shinzaburo Hanpu. It's this handmade, buy it for lifestyle tote bag company uh, that um, I'd been looking at for a little bit and got this tote bag I absolutely love. I hadn't eaten, so I grabbed a box lunch from the train station and headed out to meet Kent. Our next stop on the trip was one of our last stops at the trip. It was very far west. Um, so, this is something we've been talking about early in the planning stages even, it's a Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum. We planned it for the end of the trip because we knew it would be heavy and wanted to give it some space, and it definitely was heavy. It was really, really well done. I cried within the first uh, 10 minutes. Um, it's full of large-scale photography, which was really powerful, and anecdotes from, from stories during the time. Um, it hit me even harder than I thought it would. Um, I grabbed a little bit of coffee, and then we headed back to Kyoto. We got back to Kyoto pretty late, and Kent wanted to take part in the nightlife of Gion, and I just kind of wanted to keep it chill. So we went our separate ways for dinner. Uh, oh, as a side note, uh, we wonder what these are. These are all throughout the city. They're for people who are blind. Anyways, I Google Maps a place nearby, and then ended up seeing this place on the way there. This hole-in-the-wall sashimi bar with just a red sign. Um, inside was super chill. It was really just relaxed and everybody was friendly and laughing and having a great time and uh, had delicious food. And then I went back outside, walked back home and took a last look at the Japanese moon. I'm here with Kent. I'm recording voiceovers while we're waiting for our plane. We're about to head back to the U.S. Can you believe it, Kent? I can. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for now. <laughs> It was our last day in Japan, and we needed to get back to Tokyo for our flight. 
So we checked out of our robo hotel and headed to get on the Shinkansen, the bullet train over to Tokyo. Before we left Japan, we had one final stop to put a cap on the trip. We'd been dragging around our suitcases all around Tokyo. So one last set of stairs into the restaurant, Ganpachi Nishi Azabu. This is the restaurant that um, there's that fight scene in Kill Bill. Uh, this is the restaurant that that scene was based off of. The Crazy 88? Yeah. It really was a visually super cool restaurant. We shared some food, shared some sake, and just reminisced about the trip. We only had a couple hours before our flight, so we got out of the restaurant, took one last look at the... I mean, the colors in these public spaces. I can't talk about them enough. Uh, and headed to the airport. <laughs> My checked and carry-on luggage was definitely completely reorganized from the uh, first trip to meet the weight limits because of souvenirs and everything. Uh, we had some uh, food, which got us prepped for the States. It was a bizarre uh, plane experience because... We left and landed on the exact same day and time just because of the time difference. Uh, I thought I would not sleep on this one because we were leaving uh, during the day, but nope. Uh, no matter how much materials I brought, I still ended up sleeping and uh, had terrible jet lag for the next few days. This was a trip that felt surreal uh, leading up to it. It felt surreal that it was there and it felt surreal to be back. It was the longest trip I've ever been on and I had an amazing time. Welcome to the uh, mini souvenir haul. Uh, I didn't get a whole lot. Um, <laughs> Phoebe, stretch. I guess first bookie stuff. This is the Whole Earth Catalog, volume two. It is a series of illustrations uh, from life, uh, is what the idea is here. Uh, animals and stuff like that. They had other ones that were, you know, yokai uh, or demons and things like that, but. I was more interested in these illustrations of just, you know, uh, stuff from real life. Been flipping through this and really love the images and I'm excited to go through it more. I think this is supposed to be maybe an elephant on the front cover, an anteater, but hold on, there's a, I think I saw an elephant in here. Oh boy. I think this is an elephant, but maybe it's, maybe it's just two different types. I don't know. I got two magazines. Brutus is a magazine that I like, but this is one of their lifestyle ones, Casa. And this is all about cats. I got a cartoon in the back. It's got different <laughs> furniture and plants and books based on uh, your cat's personality. Just cat stuff. I thought it was fun. Um, I've looked through it a little bit, but excited to look through it more. Brutus Casa. I'm a big fan of Popeye magazine, which is kind of a lifestyle fashion magazine uh, for city boys. Uh, this is one of their newer ones. Um, I I can get it here in New York, but it, it's, it's more fun to get it in Japan. This one's also all about cars, uh, which I really loved a lot of the cars out there in Japan. I'm, and I'm not really a car guy. I haven't flipped to this at all, but I do really love the cover. I got two uh photography zines this one was a, a blind buy i didn't get to see what was inside uh, but it's just some um shots of some places in the philippines and this is the one i did get to see inside and thought it was really cool it's called gips there's a little explanation at the front but basically someone breaks their foot and then chronicles their uh <laughs> their life uh just going around doing their everyday stuff i love the autobiographical nature of this I already flipped through it some, and it's really nice. Um, I'm excited to explore the images more. This is a program from the Kabuki show, which I paid extra for. The majority of it is in Japanese, giving more facts and stuff about the shows that we saw. But in the back, there's also uh, a couple pages of extra detail in English. I'll probably go through this and <laughs> use my Google lens or something like that to translate to uh, read more about the shows that we saw and the programming. Uh, but I also just like uh, owning this. And the last book thing, this is from one of the shrines that I went to. It was actually the last one, that Zen temple. Um, I just really like how it looks. It is a notebook, but it opens accordion style. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go get the stamps from each one of the shrines that you go to. And this is like a stamp collecting uh, book. 
You can also get stamps from um, train stations and things like that, but I may just use it as a normal notebook. If I was to go back and change anything that I did on the trip, I would probably get one of these uh, early on so that whenever I went to shrines, um, I could start filling this guy up. Isn't this cover so cool? Look at that. Okay, next some stuff that I got from the Godzilla room for free. Um, <laughs> this is the silliest one. Uh, these are Godzilla paper clips. Oops, these are Godzilla paper clips. <laughs> They're cute, that's funny. Ken has a different one. There were two bespoke ones, but they gave us little models for each one. I immediately broke this. I had to glue the tail back on, but uh, a little Godzilla and it says, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it says Godzilla room on it. We also got a little commemorative uh, medal, which we got, they engraved our names onto. I'm sure you can't see that from there, but. Oh yeah, here's another one. This, like little post-it notes. Two things that I bought myself. This is a sticker from the uh, Awaji Island Godzilla theme park. Probably put that on my iPad or my Kindle. And then this is a sticker of baby Godzilla saying goodnight. Uh, and I'll probably put that on my headphones case. At the miniature museum, uh, we got uh, ourselves 3D printed and are gonna get a version of ourselves uh, in a couple months. But I also bought two cats and a little walkway in this dome. Um, and glue them together. These are my cats. Doink. I love the miniature so much, I wanted to get something to try and start it. This is called Sunshine Town. It's, a, it's supposed to be shaped like a book and it has a little world inside of it. Uh, you may be able to see based on the illustration. Let me see if I can do that. Uh, but should be fun, uh, hopefully. And then I can see if that's something that I wanna continue doing. Oh, here, we have an illustration of what it's supposed to look like right there. This is a shared present. Rosie asked me to get this. Uh, there's a luxury candy company called Diptyque and they have specific ones for specific cities. So this is uh, the Tokyo smell. It smells kind of like musky, but fresh. It has this kind of soccer tree, the cherry blossoms um, etched on the glass as well. Here's what it looks like. But it smells really good and it's only sold in Tokyo. We actually have this warmer that doesn't use fire. It just kind of melts it slowly. And it, we have another one from Dictique that has smelled and we've been able to use it for like months. My, my big purchase for myself was a, a chore coat from uh, The Real McCoys, which does like reproduction in Arcana. I got this sticker, Bucko Helmets. And then I got this, Crosley, excuse me, sir. I got this, this is the chore coat. I'll throw in a clip of me wearing it uh, so you can see what it is, but just like really great material. I have another, it's a chambray. I have another chambray in blue from Banana Republic and I wanted one that was uh, just a different color and one that was a little higher quality. The other one's really good too, but I just wanted uh, something else to mix it up and also wanted to own some own something from Real McCoy's. Um, it's really nice. I really like how it fits and the color of it just like really like Really like theirs. I really like it. I really like this. Uh, these are based off of old railroad workers' um, jackets, and it uses the same uh, knitting construction in how it's uh, sewed. My other expensive purchase is this $80 tote bag, uh, hand sewn in Kyoto. This is the linen one. They also had a uh, duck. Um, what's it called? You know what I mean, duck. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know. Mallard. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I forget, but you know, if you know, you know. It's, it's, this is linen, it's a super nice uh, feel, super nice material. Uh, it's going to really um, age in and wear in super well. I didn't want the, uh, the Bostock or whatever it's called because it was just too stiff. It didn't feel comfortable, but this feels like it just feels like a joy to hold. It's got a little pocket up in the front, um, which I really like. And the way you close it, it's got this rivet here and it's got some string and you just tie it up. Uh, they used to only sell these in person in Kyoto. Um, and then uh, during the pandemic, they opened it up online, but it takes a couple months to ship and to, because they hand make it and stuff like that. But yeah, and normally I like one that's a little bit more of a crossbody, uh, but the handles are so long on this that it it feels comfortable. Inside of this, we have a couple more goodies. We'll have the Gachapon, uh show off in a different video with Kent. 
from one of the shrines, I got some mulberry leaves tea. Uh, it's really tasty. I can't wait to try it again with Rosie. We already ate these, but Rosie asked me to bring her back a candy. So here was like kind of like a cookie-ish candy. How would you describe this? The candy that we had. Oh my gosh, it was like, it was like little cookie bits. Like yeah. vanilla cookie bits. They were really good. And isn't she cute? Hi. Uh, this is another Godzilla thing from the Godzilla room. Little thermos thing, water. And then, and then on just some like odds and ends, other nerdy stuff, I wanted to get uh, at least one baseball thing when I was out here. I've become too recent of a baseball fan to dedicate like an actual like whole game. I didn't want to like commit Kent to that, but I've heard they're really fun. And if I go again, I'll definitely go to a game, but this is a, a magnet from the Hiroshima Carps. Fine play. And then nerdy video game stuff. At Dragon Quest Island, I got this metal slime sticker. And then at the Dragon Quest Lawson's, I got this King Slime plush. These will both go on my desk. I also got this onion slime little zipper case. Um, I just think the fact that it says onion slime is so funny. Um, and uh, I'll find a use for this. And finally, I got this when I was in Akibahara. They had a small collection of music boxes that were based on different games, different themes, and things with them. This one is from Final Fantasy X. Uh, Tis Anarchand is the song. It just plays a small clip of it. This is a game that meant a lot to me when I was growing up. Um, very formative. And uh, the song is still good. So, and I, I the, song, the sound of it's actually like really nice. Um, I'll play a little bit for you. But that's it, that's my haul. I thought this would be way shorter uh, than it ended up being, um, but that's fine. Uh, okay, <laughs> um, that's it, um, bye. All well, right. That, yeah, that was Tokyo. <laughs> yes, it, felt it like, was. I mean, it's so funny because it was such a packed trip. Not as far as like itinerary wise. It's not like we had a bunch of stuff listed. But yeah. it just ended up, we did so much stuff. Yes, for sure. I feel like uh, Tokyo, everyone before the trip told us, like, oh, with Tokyo, just explore. Just go to mm -hmm. each neighborhood. Don't, like, you don't have to plan it. I would ask people, like, what was the best thing about Tokyo? What, what's yeah. something that you wouldn't miss? And then, like, just yeah. the whole thing, just, like, <laughs> the neighborhoods. And so no one would give me a hard, hard, <laughs> a hard answer. Right. And so we just, we did. We just kind of, like, uh, we would just take a day and go, oh, we're going to go to um, Akihabara or Shibuya or Shin what, Shinjuku or whatever. And, just and honestly, kinda... agree. Like that did. Yeah, you know? I agree. I, I said <laughs> that, that was good, good advice, I think, <laughs> uh, just to explore different places and get a feel for those different neighborhoods. There's a couple things we splurged on during the trip, which was uh, at the we stayed in Tokyo and Kyoto. Mm -hmm. And the first day we did a splurge novelty one. And then the rest of it was just in a normal hotel. And we don't feel like we wasted a penny with either of those. Like, yeah. Those we splurged on food. And then another splurge was uh, we went from just normal, uh, the basic flight seats to the premium economy. Yeah. Which is, yeah, seats. specifically still economy. So we're not talking business class. So it was. Right. It was more, cost more, but not like crazy more. Business class being like what three, five times as much, something stupid. Yeah. It was really hard to justify. Uh, but this was like, you know, it was a bump, but not crazy. And it turns mm -hmm. out like, sounds like there, it would have been, it's worth it. Yeah. I talked to my brother who did just the basic one, and it was essentially a 14 hour flight in a normal plane seat. And we yeah. got, you know, like <laughs> lazy boy style recliners, uh, all these like, 
like gave you blankets and all of this stuff and yeah and i mean like how would we have been, like we were we were able to sleep for almost the entire flight and yeah. if we were in regular sleep so for me specifically i don't think yeah. i would have been able to do that yeah if i'm flying uh coach um i always have to put my feet in the aisle because mm. there's no room and then they bring the cart and they just like they just fucking run me over. They don't even <laughs> stop or hesitate or anything. Or oh they like tap me on the shoulder. So if right. I was asleep, obviously that would wake, wake you up. How did, um, and we both slept the whole way, pretty mm -hmm. much, like a, uh, outside yeah. of a couple hours, which we were both <clears throat> concerned, or at least I was concerned about, you know, and like you don't want to have too much like jet lag and stuff like that. We ended up <laughs> Do you remember really... the uh, what we did the, on the, for that first hour of the flight back? <sighs> no, I don't. We were... <laughs> We were creating the roster for a fighting video game. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about this. What? What was the? Was it just what was there? A you may want to cut this, but yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll give. I I wrote the roster down. Yeah, please read it. Yeah, let's see. I gotta find it. What the, it came back on May, right? <laughs> I, I definitely remember that there were some offensive choices in there. <laughs> so oh, we right, did right, 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 right. All right, I'll start. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a Boston Marathon bomber in this, right? S, S, S tier. <laughs> <laughs> so strong oh, roster, yeah, strong yeah, roster. I, I totally forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is a strong. You can't argue with it either. No, I we we thought it out. We right. Thought I, it out. I definitely remember we had a lot of discussion about what characters would affect the meta of the game yes <laughs> yes thank god yeah important um, yeah i mean you got to you got to level yeah. up the game you got to make it fair and balanced exactly that's so important could you talk about your experiences being a tall person in <laughs> japan not great i would say like uh i mean that's an exaggeration it wasn't bad the only place it was really no super noticeable was the Ryokan. Mm. Uh, and that was uh, for a couple of reasons. The ceiling, like I hit my head on a lot of doorways. <laughs> Obviously, these are just older. I guess I guess I don't even know if they're that much older, but they were built to be like they were older. Um, and then the uh, the shoes, the house shoes, this isn't even a height thing, but just I have big, <laughs> wide feet. And so like, they say they take your shoes at the entrance and they give you these like they don't not sized or anything but just like these regular like shoes for walking around inside like sandal type things uh and they're very small and narrow so i could only get like i couldn't get my heel on any of them so i was just kind of shuffling around <laughs> yeah they essentially had like small medium and large and that's it i'm not even sure if they i mean whatever i had i don't think was it must have been medium or something i didn't realize they had because they when we went outside they had different size stuff mm, but for, oh. the in, for the indoor stuff i think they were just like one size i think you're right um and so that was just uncomfortable and then also uh kneeling for the for the meal for dinner that also became very uncomfortable pretty quick uh i would, I would like slide down and like get in weird angles and stuff yeah i definitely like because basically the Ryokan we'd have like I would be it's just it's trying to do like a traditional meal so there's someone that comes in occasionally and serves you the next part of the meal or whatever mm -hmm. and I I think uh, whenever she would leave the room we'd both be like, uh, <laughs> like yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure yeah and I tried to I tried to like fake it a little bit when she'd come back in just to like look a little bit like respectful, I guess. I don't she doesn't care. But... I I did at first, but after a while I was just like, this is not happening. This right. Is, yeah. This is not gonna work. <laughs> but yeah, I mean the Ryokan was really cool though. But anyway, yeah. that's just Kyoto. That's, that's a spoiler. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um uh, yeah, one well, one thing we were talking about is uh, uh like souvenirs and stuff. Mm. We were talking about the um exchange rate and uh being oh, yeah. so favorable and like we we're like should we have bought more stuff yeah it's like if you were to if, buy anything if you were to buy anything that you didn't i, I mean like, idea? um i mean some, some like there was an iris thing from mandarake that i might uh -huh. have gotten uh -huh. <laughs> which we have been mispronouncing which is insane that we <laughs> 
it's because it's obviously that's how it would have to be pronounced. Yeah. But there's uh, this large toy store that we went to that we were pronouncing as Mandrake. And yeah. then I was talking to my brother about it. He's like, Oh yeah, I went to this place called Mandarake that I liked a lot. I was like, I've never been there. And as he yeah. was describing, I'm like, But I mean, like oh. having taken three years of Japanese class, how I I, I should know better. <laughs> no, nothing could be called Mandrake. That doesn't make any sense. That's so stupid. So but like, I don't know, something like that. But also, right. you know, we were looking at uh Gesha Pond stuff, and I'm not even saying like, oh, I need you should have gotten a lot more of those. But I remember thinking like, oh, well, you know, we'll get you know, cash this one thousand and like spend it on some like, yeah. on a few. But like, that's not going. That's kind of crazy, crazy for right? Yeah. yeah. And so like, you know, later doing the math, like there there were like some that were one hundred, two hundred, three hundred, five hundred, and five hundred. Like, oh, that's that's kind of crazy. Uh, but one hundred yen is like sixty three cents. <laughs> So like we're talking about multiples of 63 cents yeah which is kind of ridiculous so crazy and i mean like so much it was such a perfect we didn't plan it around this but we really did come at a, at a really favorable time for the amount of like us spending money there yeah um so like everything was you know just like incredibly affordable i think the meals in particular because we, we mm-hmm. splurged on some meals and stuff mm-hmm. that uh may have been like yeah. half of half of what they would have been otherwise which I mean, like, def- we're talking definitely. about big numbers there yeah because we went to <laughs> at least at least one i think two michelin star restaurants yeah and when we went there each of us paid an amount that i felt like okay this is going to be a nice meal you know what i mean yeah. but like translating that to probably what it would be that the cost of that meal in the u.s is like significantly more yeah, so definitely interesting. I, I I would have bought more. Um, I would have gotten some more clothes. I think if I would have been thinking about uh the exchange rate and everything more. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I might have done the same, and also just just stuff to to have, just because I I I feel like it's it's so easy when you come back from a trip to kind of just slide back into your normal life and not be mm-hmm. thinking about it as much, mm-hmm. and so like even if it's just like. Uh, a jacket that I mean, there was that that jacket at the Godzilla store that was like mm-hmm. too short. I, like clothing for me is good. Like everything's going to be a little short, and I got some shirts, and I think those are okay. But um, I think like I could have gotten more clothes for sure. And like mm-hmm. maybe is that I don't know about that jacket because it was a little, <laughs> a little short. But something like that that's a little more expensive, and you know whatever. Uh, because again, it's like expensive relative to other things in Japan, but like grand scheme of things, like considerably cheaper than it would have been in the right. States. And it's also, for me, it was even difficult to just do head math because it wasn't necessarily like, okay, take a zero off or yeah. add a zero. And that's what it is. Because the yin was just in different denominations, mm-hmm. I couldn't, it didn't translate into how much money I was actually spending. Because yeah. at least the way that I handled the way that I had spending money is I would I'd get a certain amount in. I'd go to like, I get $350 out uh, in cash and get that exchange to yen. And then I would pay for meals with my credit card, but everything yeah. else was just the the cash money. <clears throat> and so I wasn't even necessarily thinking about, well, how much would this cost me back home? How much am I yeah. spending here? I'm just like, well, okay, this number, you know? Yeah, exactly. Same. And I feel like a lot of the stuff, like the food and the meals and stuff, we had kind of planned budgetary stuff right. ahead of time. So we kind yes. of had that stuff figured out. So when right. it, came to like coming to a store or something i think it was harder to realize how cheap stuff was mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. i mean i could use apps and stuff but i mean i don't know i felt like but i mean you know i, I don't i don't feel like there's all these huge things that i definitely should have gotten all these xyz but it right. is something that i think about a little bit right that's um, great i mean that's a lot closer to 50 like half a dollar than a dollar you're that's so cool. right it would have been better to like round down, <laughs> think of it down the other way yeah um, speaking of food, what we're we're splitting this up into talking about Tokyo, and then we'll see the clips from Kyoto, and then we'll talk about Kyoto. In part because we've both been thinking about what were your favorite part of the trip and stuff like that. It's so mm-hmm. hard to categorize because the two sides were so different that splitting yeah. it up just makes more sense. What were your? I know this is a question that I got asked. Uh, what was some of your favorite food? And we're going to keep it to Tokyo this time. What was some of your favorite food that you had in Tokyo? Mm, God, I mean, the, I, even splitting it up, it's hard. Yeah. But I think like 
I think my favorite me- meal, my favorite meal of the whole trip, I feel like was Shin Udon, which was this, uh, that place that we, we ate in this weird staggered fashion. Yes. So I went there first thing, like I had, I hadn't, we hadn't had, I hadn't had Udon yet. Um, and I was like, I, you know, I've heard really good things about this place. I want to go. Uh, we had already had it on our list and I've done a little more research. Like, oh, yeah, I want to make sure I go here. And I go there. I like take a train basically there specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, and they, there's this line and they take a, I stood in the line for a few minutes before realizing there's a machine up front. And then I like, get the ticket and it says, all right, see you in four hours or whatever it was. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, okay. So, uh, I was still figuring out what I want to do for the day kind of. Um, but there was like a, this crazy shaved ice place that I wanted, that I tried to go to that also was, cl- you know, no reservations or whatever. So I was just like, okay, I went to Harajuku, I think. But anyway, come back around to it later. And the, uh, you know, I, they had, uh, you get in line and, pl- and like place your order before you, they let you in. Cause it's like a really tiny place. Um, they give you the, the menu and I found what I wanted and they had this thing at the top. It was like quantity of like Udon noodles, I guess. And they had like one vague. One, yeah. One, 1. 1.5, two and three, I guess in terms of blobs of noodles. Um, and I was just like, I have been waiting for a long time. And I, the last thing I want is to not have enough. Uh, so I'm just going to go crazy and get three. So I got the maximum amount. And then, um, uh, and I'm frankly glad I did. I didn't eat all of it. I couldn't eat all of it, but I ate most of it. And it was like really, really, really very good. I don't know how to explain it, but it was like, that was my favorite meal of the trip for sure. Yeah. We had a, a like, like you said, we had a funny staggered thing because on the last day of each one, we kind of had a half solo day and then met up mm-hmm. in the evening. And, um, about halfway through the day, I was like, Hey Kit, you want to meet up to eat at Shin Udon later? And he was like, <laughs> I'm there now, buddy. <laughs> I had already, I was waiting. I, I think right. at that point, uh, they had like just called me and said yes. like, here it comes. Yeah. Maybe it's time. And and I'm glad that I didn't. Cause at first you're like, well, I'm there. Maybe like you can meet up with me and maybe they can get us both in. But they like Kent said, it was like 10 seats in the whole place. Yeah. They had a, uh, it was, I was at a two person table and they had like this translucent plexiglass in the middle of it. And there was another person on the other side. Of it. <laughs> so I was like, yep. okay. I ended yeah. up going later in the day. Kent was a, a, a real pal and sent me mm. the QR code. So I could just sign up for the line. I was thinking oh, wow. about like, how am I going to do this? Cause like they knew I just came out. So I was like, there was a guy kind of hovering around mm. and I was like, if I can't do it, like while he's there, because right. he knew that I just came out and I'm going like <laughs> right back to the thing. So I kind of hovered around waiting until he went inside and then I ran over and quickly was like, quick, 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 quick. And then I just Ooh. ran away. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank <laughs> you for your service. You could have, I guess the lie would have been like, I loved it so much. I need to get back in there. <laughs> it's fair. Yeah. I could have uh, done that. I ended up getting, uh, cause basically uh, a lot of the restaurants in Japan that we went to at least were very specialized as far as the ones we ran into where it's like, if you're selling Udon noodles, you're selling Udon noodles. It's like, that's your thing. Yeah. Um, and so s- same with this. And they offered two options, which were you could get hot or cold Udon. I never had cold. And I also didn't really know what was the wonder quote unquote, like the traditional one or the one that's like, yeah. Hey, if you're getting nude on, you need to get this style. Yeah. So, uh, I was looking at them and it was marked as like, a recommended or something like that. Like one of those like chef recommends. Mm-hmm. So I chose this cold one, which was just like, it was just cold noodles with beef and yuzu and it was good. But I later had later on in the trip, I did have some hot udon as well as like, oh, this is much. I like this. <laughs> I like this more. I like this more. So I'm definitely jealous, but I'm so glad that you got to have that uh, that udon experience at Shin Udon. Yeah, I had cold boba later mm. and for the same thing, just like, oh, well, you know, tr- experimenting. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's fine. You know, it's whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, the hot made it all the difference. And I think that oh, yeah. some of that was just dumb luck because like there was stuff on there that like they had, you want to pay extra for special butter cheese oh, or whatever? Oh, right. And I don't know what the, I didn't know what it was, but I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I'm just part of it, obviously, being vegetarian, that limits 
uh, my options. But even with that, there's a little bit of guesstimation. I'm just like, all right. Could you actually talk about that a little bit? How was how did you find being vegetarian in Japan? Not well. I would say not that bad, considering. Uh, I think Japan does not typically understand vegetarian very much. It's kind of mm. vegan or nothing. Mm. Uh, they're like, what do you mean you don't have you you're you're ve- you're veg you don't eat fish? Mm. Like everybody had like, and so people told me like, oh, get like a card that says everything. I, and I didn't do that. I don't know why I did. That's stupid. Uh, but uh, I think by virtue of the fact that we planned so much of it ahead of time uh, was very helpful. Uh, yeah. You know, we scouted out all these places and got reservations way ahead of time, which, you know, as evidenced by like just stopping in some of these high traffic things is not as easy. Uh, so the yes. fact that we were able to get reservations ahead of time made a big difference, I think. I think so, uh, too. Both for like, you know, vegetarian stuff and being able to for me to find food. Um, and also just to be able to get really good food that we wanted to eat while not waiting, like spending huge hours waiting in line. Yeah. The Udon place was such a long, it was like, like you said, it was like a four hour wait. And then once you got there, it was another hour Mm -hmm. wait to get in. And we even, sometimes when we, we had like a shared Google maps of like all the places that we were thinking about going so that we, when we were in an area, we could just like pop it up and say like, what's nearby. Mm-hmm. And we definitely like went on some wild, it's a wild goose chase where yeah. we'd be like, oh, this, we want to go to this restaurant. There was one like tofu centric restaurant that we were like, this. Oh, really good. yeah, yeah. And it was like in this weird, like uh, kind of off the beaten path. And when we got it's there, Shibuya somewhere. Right. Yeah. It was all, was it, was it, it wasn't that it was closed. It's what it was like, it was booked up for the night or something. Like yeah. That. Yeah. And it was, it was so weird walking around in Shibuya because it was like really packed. It was Shibuya. And I think that night specifically mm. was like the most crowded I've ever seen anything in my life. <laughs> like, cause that, that's yeah. where they had that huge crossing. That's like the most traffic crossing in the world or whatever. Right. And, and we, we went there lost, like, so we had to like, yeah. And, and we went there at the, like, <laughs> what was it the, the time of day that was like the most traffic right everybody was getting off work yeah and so uh but it was interesting because like just from walking i don't know 20 minutes towards this place pretty quickly we were in the middle of like this kind of almost deserted neighborhood which <laughs> felt very strange like is this the same city like what the fuck is and just walking yeah um but yeah, once we were in, before we got out of it, it was like a maze because there was like up all these different levels, uh, and I was uh, misreading Google Maps, not realizing the compass function that the phone had. <laughs> Learned I about that with, for the first time with layered places like that because basically the 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 apex was like you had your bottom floor that split in like eight different directions. And there was a second floor on top of that, which split into multiple other directions. It was like, there was a bunch of things going on. Yeah. And they're like these malls and underground stuff. It was very confusing. Very. And then, and it was like, and you couldn't like just maneuver around because it was so densely packed. Mm-hmm. Like it was literally like you were having to weave between people. Yes. Oh, so that was pretty wild. And to, I just remembered this an anecdote to how people treated when you would say I'm vegetarian um, later on, another spoiler, the Ryokan that we went to um, when we were talking about, he was like, okay. Uh, Cause they prepped the dinner for you. And yeah. Kent was like, oh, I'm vegetarian. And they're like, Oh, and they like, even though we'd said so beforehand, but yeah. um, they kind of like uh, talk, talking between each other. Like, okay, I'm going to go to the kitchen. They go back in the kitchen, comes back. He's like, okay. Um, we, I think we should be good, but like fish broth is okay, right? Like that's not, that's yeah. ve- vegetarian, right? And yeah, like, first no. they asked about eggs, and I was like, yeah, yeah. eggs are eggs fine, are fi- right, mm-hmm. yeah. right. And then they come back with that, and I'm like, ah, and they're like, oh, they're like fish broth isn't vegetarian. Is kind of like obviously there's like Japanese is not our first language. We use our Google Translate a lot mm-hmm. to try yeah. to help out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it def- there definitely was some interesting, like with the vegetarian thing specifically. Yeah. That one was uh, a little, yeah. Th- fortunately, most of it, I think, I think wound up being vegetarian ish. And there were, there were a couple dishes that used that broth, but I, again, this was like the place that was the hard, like the, had the most trouble translating and talking, like they didn't speak as much English there. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So it's possible that I may wound up eating some broth or some shit that might have had meat in it. But overall, I felt like I was pretty good. I was pretty, I was able to achieve what I needed to pretty well. And it's crazy. I've talked to other people who, uh, I thought like, um, I talked to Hannah Westbrook and she was talking about how she had like very, little, very, like a lot of trouble over there. Oh, interesting. Just, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it was a different, like the trip was planned out a little differently, I guess, but yeah, mm. it's, um, I, yeah, I feel like we were, I felt fortunate. I think if we were not planning things out the way we did, uh, I think we would have been, or I would have been, and <laughs> had some deep, some more, I would have been in some deep shit. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I think the planning process of specifically the food was really important for, uh, especially since you're vegetarian, because we were able to not necessarily stress about let's find a place that is vegetarian. We had to, we did that once or twice maybe, but for the most part, we kind of knew where it was safe to go. Yeah. So it and I mean, even the ones that we did, like. I feel like there were a couple times where we did wind up waiting, like that gyoza place. Yeah. Um, but like that one was one that was on our list. Mm -hmm. You know, we knew it had vegetarian stuff and yeah. you know, we were in good shape. The only the only there's only one time uh where it was a ish like a like I really couldn't get good like a dinner. Mm. Uh and that was like I think the last night in Kyoto where um like the Hiroshima thing went longer than uh, we thought it would, or I thought it, right. I thought we'd be back earlier. Right. And we were going to go to uh, Gion and kind of find mm, something. Mm, mm -hmm. um, and so, and also there was like a, like my phone was dead. And so I had to come back to the uh, hotel and charge right. my phone and bring, get it back over there. So like, it was even later by the time we got, uh, right. I got there. Um, and you, you were, you know, you, you went somewhere closer, but I went to Gion and then I was like exploring around trying to find places and I would go in a place and they would be a sorry, Japanese only. And mm. I was like, okay. I think they were just done with tourists for the night. It was like everybody yeah. was, it was just like a bunch of like drunk businessmen and stuff, <sighs> a lot of local people and stuff. Um, and I went to a few places and they were all, they all kind of turned me away. Um, and then of course, the more you do that, the later it gets, blah, 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 blah. So eventually I just wound up going to 7-Eleven and getting right. some stuff, which again, 7-Eleven in Japan is like really nice. They have like really good food. And people had told me ahead of time, especially being a vegetarian, that that's going to be something that you are going to kind of rely on maybe. And I don't, and I only really feel like I relied ish on it that one night, really. Mm. Yeah. Cause we definitely went there like as like being like, we need to check this place out or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. like it really is good as like, and it is, it feels like a Whole Foods inside or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, I definitely don't remember any time where like, uh, okay well let's just go to 7-eleven or whatever yeah yeah we definitely talked about it a couple of times as far as like mm -hmm. and if we don't find anything we'll just stop and do a 7-eleven and which sounds like like if you're talking about it in american terms if you're like we can't find a place to eat we're just going to go to 7-eleven that's yeah. like especially if you're on a vacation a little sad but yes like, yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really weird over there i mean i know that uh there was one time where uh Rachel told me about um, melon bread, I think. And we specifically mm. made a point of getting some of that melon bread, which was actually very good. It was good. Um, and then, but yeah, I would say generally speaking, it was, uh, we didn't use it as much as I thought I might wind up, might mm. have wound up using mm. it. I think that we did, we did two kind of like omakase things. Mm. And uh, I thought the one in Tokyo was really fun. Yeah, it was really good. I don't think we had a funny table because, like, on most of if, if, if uh, in, in Makase places, it's basically like there's a just like a stay like a you're it's a, a couple seats, maybe eight to ten, and you're sitting there facing the chef while they're cooking it, and they hand it to you, right? Yeah. And I've only been once before. Uh, to that style, one that's that intimate. And the people that I was sat with, all of them were weird characters. And so it's fun to, <laughs> to, 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 to see that that translated also yep. to Japan. Uh -huh. We had basically like <laughs> these weird businessmen next to us that were yep. like, I don't somehow know. involved in politics. P politics somehow. They were yeah. definitely. I feel like yeah. they were, I, I kind of felt like they were like lobbyists or something. That's what I felt too. Like they weren't like directly involved in politics. They were talking mm -hmm. about like, oh, poli like future political right. stuff. 
No, yeah, that, that conversation would be like, yeah, I just interviewed this new guy, and I was like, who's your favorite world leader of all time? And then, like, the then the next – I morning, love that question. It's so good. And they're like, oh, good question. Who would he say? And um, and then he said something. He's like, yeah, yeah, but, you know, like, Algeria in the 70s, it wasn't that good. And that's his <laughs> own stuff like that. Um, and then other things uh-huh. like, yeah, I – yeah, what, what am I doing? Uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I just got finished talking to, like, six or seven different diplomats. They're talking about uh, upping their uh, electric, you know, something, blah, blah, yeah. blah like yeah and it then, felt uh, pretentious the whole conversation yes. felt pretentious and it's also it, funny because like, this is obviously an expense thing yes like they had there were like meals or like parts of the meal that they were not even eating yes and it was just like they were, <laughs> it was very Cause, funny because we got the basic you basically had different tiers because it was prepped you know what i mean we got the basic one but they were getting all these extras thrown Old on there. bottles of wine and stuff. I know, enormous. And like this one guy in their group showed up late, like super yeah. late. And then halfway through, this guy's like making something really intricate in front of him, you know, like, and he's explaining what the fish is. And the guy's just like, I'm good. Like, I don't want yeah. it. <laughs> and then he left early. And like 100%, you had to pay for the whole meal. Yes, yes. And like so, there were those people, and then on the far side, like there were this other couple who came in really late. Missed and like you, the first four courses. Yeah, yeah, it's so wild, and I feel like he kept the the chef kept preparing. Like I think they wound up with the same stuff. Yeah, but, like it felt like they just did not care. No, and they're just super casually. And yeah, just yeah, were, like young. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> there was, there was assholes. One, yeah, young. <laughs> There was one other couple that kind of just melted into the scenery, which was a couple who was sharing champagne. So yeah. you would just assume that like, oh, they're like, it's a, it's a significant uh, like event for their relationship or something like yeah, that. Yeah, sure. Uh, but it was funny. It was, it was just a funny little like painting of all the different <laughs> people doing stuff there. Yeah, and it was also funny how loud the poli- the, the oh my god, we'll call them lobbyists. Politicians. How lobbyists? The, the, how how loud the lobbyist people were? Because yeah. like you would think that this is like this kind of discussion is like at least somewhat sensitive. <laughs> the information we're talking about, but they just oh, could not. Yeah. They're just getting drunk and like whatever. The right, point. which it's is funny. Cool. I mean, like in general in Japan, it's very quiet. As yeah, far as like on the train on the oh my subway god. ride dead silent i remember the first train ride we got on coming back from the, the uh, airport and it was like i don't know 20 minutes or something and uh like we start we talked like a little bit at first and then mm-hmm. i was like oh my god like everybody is completely silent mm-hmm. and it was just like, oh i guess we just have to just look at our phones for 20 minutes which is so okay. and we had a couple times we would like text each other because that's the like, <laughs> only way we could communicate us while no standing one, right next to each other no one would have done anything if we talked but it did feel like yeah it felt disrespectful. Hey, so yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. Um, I totally agree. So that that was definitely super bizarre, especially on I've never been on any public transit that's been that. I mean, like I've been on like the the Paris subway was like quieter, but it wasn't like silent, which is yeah. what this was essentially. And it was packed. It was like, all the time. like almost all the time it was just like so packed. So yeah. many people there. Like yeah. you could like you were lucky if you found a seat most of mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah. in general too, that makes like the 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 lobbyists' loudness even crazier because it looks <laughs> like, man, like people yeah. don't really speak even that loudly. In, yeah, you know, in public, you know what yeah. I mean. But, yeah, <laughs> I love how much time we're spent talking about the lobbyists. <laughs> I know, I know. It's like a seventy-hour video. Well, we did arcade stuff twice. The yes. first one was in Akihabara, and that was like. I mean, they're older games, obviously. The whole thing is like this very old retro kind of uh, feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I actually, well, the last day I went to Super Potato, which was even more so. They had like mm-hmm. a, like a, they had a solid snake, life, like two scale thing that was like missing a leg and just kind of leaning up against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it just felt like you were going in a time machine. Mm-hmm. They had like CRT televisions and stuff. Wow. Uh, and and yeah, the arcade was like we were playing side scrolling Galaga type stuff, and it was like really fun. And yeah. that the the one where we where we were uh, you know it, the whole thing contained us, and we were sitting next to each other, and like all these lights and stuff. Yeah. I don't know, it was just really fun. I enjoyed that a lot. And then the uh, the box the boxing game was oh that my was God. my favorite. Oh my. Yeah, 
we had talked about while we were there, like how spoiled we would be as kids. We enjoyed oh it as gosh. adults, yes. but like, especially because it, the yin was so weak against the dollar, like it could be like, okay, well, I'm gonna basically going to put like, if you put like $20 in coins, you could play for a while. You yeah. Know? So like, I do I, not think we spent that much. I mean, it was I don't just think like, so yeah. Either. And we were there for a significant amount of time. Yeah, for sure. Um, but it was still so many, like, like you were saying, like specific experience, like cabinets and things like that, that were yeah. just so, like, not just like, here's the game, but like you're doing it in public. It's yes. like, it felt like, you know. Yeah. Like these are fun. games that you would not play it anywhere else. It felt mm -hmm. like, um, and the, the machines were all unique. Everything was like very unique looking. And there were all those, like so many claw machines. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and again, really clean. Everything yeah. didn't feel grimy, which is kind yeah. of what I think of when I think of arcades a little bit. Is like, and especially when you think of like old and retro. Yes, yes. But it was like for it to be that old and retro. Yeah, exactly. But everything's just so completely clean. It's very yeah. interesting. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was super fun. And then, um, like the stuff at the Tokyo Tower was also like the the crazy robot fighting thing, and right. there's a lot a lot of just like experiential things that you would never do anywhere else. Right. Like, yeah. To your point about like uh, coming there when you were a kid or whatever, I feel like growing up, I would just, as a, a Godzilla nerd, that would have been, I mean, as it was incredible as it was. And I'm so glad that we got to do so many Godzilla related things. <laughs> um, but uh, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. But like going through that uh, Radio Kaiken, I think it was called that, that mm. tower that was like, 10 8 12 i don't know how oh many stories God. yeah and each story had like multiple stores and they were all like kaiju and like the anime stuff and all this stuff that like specifically for me like godzilla stuff like that you never see that in the states like mm -hmm. growing or at least for me growing up that was like i never saw any godzilla stuff there was one store that my parents like found in north park mall and it closed mm -hmm. um, and then like there were a couple of comic book stores but mm -hmm. like as growing up and everything else was mail order. So that, that just to be there and feel like, Oh, the, and it was packed. Like every, like so many people, it always felt like such a, you know, marginalized marginal kind of interest thing. So it would, it's such a cool experience to be there like that. Yeah. I don't think there was any shop that we went into that didn't, that we felt like we were the only people there. Right. Yeah, Definitely. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, <laughs> I think it's a good opportunity to talk about the Godzilla room a little bit. <laughs> I'm so glad we did that. Yes, that we is debated. So... We debated about yeah. it. I mean, it was expensive for one night, right? Yeah. And but uh, yeah, I would have felt really bad not doing that. So recommended for anyone. Yes. Uh, Lori or whoever, like, you uh, got to <laughs> do it. It's so what a fun. way to start the trip, too. Right? Yeah. Oh my god, that was just like. All they had like the literal skull from Godzilla vs. Destroyer that like they used in the thing in, in the scene where he melted. Um, and like they, which was like an actual movie prop, and then they had all this concept art. And then, of course, the giant like some of this was made for the room, like the giant hand crashing through the wall <laughs> and the and the human scale uh Godzilla with that mirror thing. Yes, the floor was buildings like. And then, of course, they press the button, and the oh my god, you hear the stomp, the lights go out. You hear the stomping, and the the fucking beds vibrate. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Unbelievable. Did, okay, how much of that did you know was going to happen move, going in? Did you know all of it? Um, not all of it. I knew a little bit of it. I think like years ago, I had watched somebody do a walkthrough of it. Mm. Um, but they actually changed some of it. Like the mm. that skull used to be the oxygen destroyer. Mm. Uh, but they swapped it out. And the oxygen destroyer was in the Godzilla Museum mm. um, that we went to. Um, but yeah, that, but I mean, like, I didn't remember the vast majority of it. I was right. made a point. I wanted to be as surprised as I could be. And it was, <laughs> it, was it, it, surpassed, was it surpassed anything that uh, I thought it was just going to, even if it was just aesthetically what it was, yeah. that would have been fine. But the fact that there's like a black, like a black light bathroom. And there was the shaking beds and like the audio elements. It was yeah. just like incredible, incredible. And the, yeah. the floor was even like 
you got special Godzilla, a Godzilla elevator. Yeah, and yeah. Everything. And there were pictures on, on the walls, on all the hallways, all the Godzilla stuff. Godzilla posters everywhere. Uh, gave us a lot bottom. of like goodies. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I still have all those Godzilla paper clips, which yes. is a hilarious yes. goodie to have. Oh my. I, we thought it was mints at first. They When you got it, you got like a, like a, a pretty much like a, a goodie bag of things, including yeah. some useful things like stationery or a pen or whatever that says that this, I got, I'm, I'm drinking from my Godzilla <laughs> water bottle right now, but they also had this like thing that looks like a box of mints. And you're like, oh, Godzilla shaped mints. That makes sense. I, uh, of course it does. Uh, but uh-huh. then you put it up and it's Godzilla head shaped paper clips, which. Yeah. Okay. What use? I'm trying to think of a use. Like, I, I feel like no taxes. <laughs> I mean, like, paper clips are such a, like, divorce you know... papers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god that's amazing but yeah i was i that was definitely a highlight for me that yes. room was just insane i so love good. that so much and yeah down at the, like the bottom floor they had uh like the stuff from uh they had some godzilla yeah. and monster x from godzilla final wars the suits and the like a, again a, the diorama thing and mm-hmm. the only thing they had the the head which was visible from the uh, outside the building and it looked like Godzilla was to scale like all like walking through the city. The only thing is they for whatever reason the terrace was like closed off so we couldn't like go yeah. out right there. That was my one regret. And when we looked into it, it looked like it had been down for like almost Months. half a year or something like that. Months right? anyway. Yeah. I don't know why, but yeah. Hmm. Well that was Kyoto. Uh short obviously the shorter leg of the trip than yeah. Tokyo. It, it was not by much though i think like it it's we just have a kind of almost warped view of it because uh we didn't spend as much time in kyoto but yeah. we spent a, a good amount of time come with kyoto as our home base like going yes. doing stuff out of kyoto yeah the difference between the two is in tokyo we are mostly hanging out in tokyo and then kyoto was kind of our home base like you're saying for day trips yeah um but yeah so on paper we didn't spend that much less time in kyoto but it definitely felt like it yeah because we didn't spend as much time in like the city and And then certainly not a lot of time like exploring yes and i think to that to to comment on that as well is that um so we're watching back these these clips and talking about them and then we do these the like reflections here at the end and we talked a lot about what was going on in tokyo uh, mm-hmm. But during the Kyoto sections, we weren't discussing as much what we were looking at. But that's mm-hmm. in part because I think that Tokyo, the two the two parts of the trip were so different in that yeah. it was kind of like, oh, wow, that Ryokan was amazing. Oh, wow, Nara was amazing. Oh, wow, like this was amazing. <clears throat> the other ones are like, oh, you remember this thing? You remember that thing? To- yeah, Kyoto I was- think there wasn't as many surprises in yes. Kyoto because yes. in Tokyo, the whole point of it was exploring. But in Kyoto, we had everything pretty planned out. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. You know, the, the, all the all the excursions, so to speak, day trips and stuff mm-hmm. um, like Hiroshima was something that I'll never forget. That was like a really powerful experience and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that that f-ed me up. That was really yeah. that was a real I, I was thinking about like any other what other museums have affected me like that and the only one i can think of is auschwitz yeah and that one is kind of cheating because that like that i mean i thought you were gonna give like some sort of weird review (laughs) auschwitz kind of sucked (laughs) thanks for saying it yeah (laughs) google reviews no one's bold enough to give one star reviews that's to right, Auschwitz. That's right. Yeah, no one's brave. I actually, enough. come to think of it, do you think that it feels weird to put give five stars oh. to Auschwitz? Is it weirder to give one star or five stars? That's a great question. <laughs> it's a good. They're first probably date like, question. look. <laughs> that is that is a great question. You know, I'm sure they would want you to give five stars. Like they probably should tell you that up front. Like, look, I know it's going to feel weird, but please. Give us five stars. <laughs> it's not about what happened. It's about no. teaching. Yeah I, yeah, I really was affected by I didn't know how. I knew it would be like 
we we put it at the end of the trip for a reason. We were both yes. like, this is going to be real heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't expect to be affected as much as I w- was. I think it was really well like laid out, especially yeah. those first few rooms with these huge scale photography and kind of these like, not interactive, but like these kind of video screens that would show before and afters and these kind of stories and paintings and like anecdotes. I think the art got surprised me more mm. than anything. Cause like a lot of this, you knew you were going to see this, that, yeah. the other thing, but like the idea of the art created by people who were there and that kind of shot shows their and talks about their experience and what it yeah. like. And I think the way they'd arranged it almost chronologically, the whole thing, like first this, then this, then this, mm-hmm. and like, and then the fire start and then this, and like all the, like, I feel like they did a great job of capturing the horror of it. I um, agree. And it made it feel like you were there experiencing and seeing it in a way that I haven't seen it done before. It, it's like, it's so easy to talk about something like that from an academic standpoint mm-hmm. instead, instead of like, making you feel it and feel the weight of it the specificity of all the stories was like here's like something that i saw and it's like wow like that's brings it really to a human level where if you're just looking at it in in big that makes it so feel like you're saying so real of course it's real that's not not i know you're questioning the yeah (laughs) Not You're a, not questioning whether it happened right, or not. I, I'm not a, like, yeah. The I'm reason not, we, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell everybody the real reason we went here right. is because uh, I didn't we, it. we've been arguing about whether right. it happened. And yeah, they I actually have, oh. right, of course, they have a building there that there is yeah. preserved. And uh-huh. he's like, that's not real. There's no right. way. That didn't right. happen. And so it's now Photoshop, the, it's Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you've seen it with your own eyes. Finally. Right. right. And now I believe it. Yeah, and finally you're willing to I'm admit. Wrong. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's very big of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and that's I told that to the people there too. They really, I'm sure they appreciated it. that. Yeah, I, I don't know if I even mentioned this to you, but uh, there was that part where um, I was like, looking at some of that other stuff, and you went down to the cafe, and there was this thing talking about like why, why it happened. Did I tell you, told you me this? a little bit about it? It was just like. It was really interesting because, like, obviously, the perspective of someone in J- of the country of Japan is going to be different from the states, and obviously, the thesis statement of this whole thing is that it should not have happened, and yes. like nothing like this should ever happen, which I agree with. But they, it is interesting that they the way they had framed it because they said the reason this happened uh, is for two reasons. One of which is. Uh, like a political thing with the Soviet Union, they wanted like th- like if if things had extended further, then the Soviets would have a negotiation, uh, would have like a successful negotiations, and then they will have more leverage in the post-war period. Mm. And then the other reason was to ju- for the United States to justify the expense of the research for so the nuclear bo- nuclear so program, which is very yeah very curious. Yes. I think we both came away from that being like, wow, like that was like, uh, it, 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 we, it was definitely out of our way to go to it. But I think mm-hmm. afterwards we were both like felt justified in the, the, the amount of time we spent to get there. Um, I guess two things we can talk about are, um, we could talk about Awaji Island if we wanted to, yeah. um, Nara and the scale of things. Uh, I, we should talk about bullet train and like, yeah. the- Ask me how that feels mm-hmm. uh, and then food again. And I think, yes. Yeah. I mean, the bullet trains is an interesting, but like I, I have definitely have had people ask me about like, do you feel the speed of the bullet train? Right. Um, and I did clips, you know, it looks like right? it looks so <laughs> fast. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, but I, obviously those are things in the foreground, but yeah. I think when you're on the train, you're not actively looking out the window all the time and, you know, seeing that kind of stuff. Um, it, there's no seat belts. People are standing, walking around, going, going to the bathroom, like everything. It doesn't feel like you're going fast at all. Yeah. Like we, um, for different than a subway, the bullet train has, you get a ticket for a specific time and we actually missed our first bullet train. And this is the time we use our Google Translate the most, like literally yeah. wrote down sentences and showed it to yeah. people. Yeah. We were like, Hey, we missed it. Uh, we just like mixed up the, what, when it was arriving and, uh, we got onto a bullet train and the doors closed and it started moving. 
you know, all right. we're not exactly <laughs> sure if we were on the right one or not, but yeah, to show how the speed, it goes really fast, but it's really smooth. We were standing, walking around, trying to find a conductor as the train was going from zero to speed. And I didn't feel it. Yeah. Like 200 miles an hour or something. And it's just like nothing. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really impressive. And yeah. I like it something that would be great to have in the States, obviously. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. God damn. I yeah. loved Nara. Nara was one of my favorite, just like I mean, the whole trip, the deer, yeah. we, they were just hanging out. We probably, we were talking like maybe hundreds. I mean, hundreds. I, it's got to be between several hundred and I mean, a thousand sounds crazy. It's got to be I can't be a thousand. I can't. That's too I mean, many. maybe, but like that seems like too much. But it does feel like at least several hundred, right? Yes, because like I don't even. We did not. We kind of like when you enter the area, you see these deer. They're all in this area, and then we walk to the big shrine up there. Uh, was there a deer around there too? There's so many mm -hmm. areas that we didn't go to that I assume also have a lot of deer as well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There was there was no shortage for sure. No short, but it was really fun. They were oh, very loved it. Ag aggressive in a cute way. Yeah, yeah. I think that the the bowing took me completely by surprise. Oh my gosh, I, so cute. <laughs> no Especially one had warned me. The young ones that didn't really they knew that bowing would get them a treat, but didn't really get it. They'd like sprint up to you and then bow out of your eyesight. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh uh, man, and they're like so like uncoordinated bowing yes, and, yes. <laughs> and then so some of them funny. just didn't care they're just like laying down they yeah like, yeah like i've had enough of these <laughs> cookie things <laughs> and then the shrine there was really cool too there was a lot of like things that we saw that were really impressive in scale in a way that you can't really capture on camera that you yeah. just by feeling how small you are yes um there are a few things like you know redwoods or grand canyon like different things that like are give you a feeling being there sc mm -hmm. scale wise that you mm -hmm. can't really just talk about uh and i think i got that a little bit with it with this where th that giant yeah. wooden st uh statue thing yeah. and then the the and really the building con that held it even more so yeah which was just enormous the and big gates and stuff like that yeah felt yeah it's like, like wow yeah for sure it's um, almost like what it makes the way you have to look up and stuff like what yeah. the way you have to crane your neck Yes, because you can obviously like see a scale of like you see a person standing next to something, but like you being surrounded by it, you feel so small. Yeah. Same thing with the 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 Fushimi Anar Anari. Um, I really that was I also really loved that. I'm glad we did it. I my brother asked me like, did you when you went to the shrines, did you feel anything like spiritual in any of them? And I don't think I felt anything like spiritual, but. The Fushimi Inari was the closest I felt to like feeling like, ooh, like there's something. I, because I was like, the the purpose of the, or like the stated purpose of it was, you know, like community and business and like stuff. And I definitely like while I was there was thinking about like, okay, like what is, like what are my contributions to whatever the world and stuff like that? Or like, what what am I doing in life, you know? And it's cool because you walk up and it's just like these overwhelming amount of these things. And yeah. then it, op it opens up to the city where you see, you know, like what people can accomplish when they're, mm -hmm. you know, and then as you walk back down, you see all the names and they're like, oh, these are all individual people doing their thing. I'm just like, it was really, I, I thought it was very like nice. I think part of what it hit me more about that than any of the others is because it wasn't just a shrine. It was like a walking path up a mountain. Right. So it felt like you were in nature in addition to then this like man-made experience. Mm -hmm. Uh and so it was a process. It was like a like the whole hike thing was part of part of it. Yeah. Um and I think that just going to a shrine and just like hanging around is not going to be the same experience as that. And of course the further along you get, the fewer people there are and it becomes more of a solitary-ish kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um and it, it it gets increasingly beautiful as you get further up the mountain and there you see all these trees and the views and everything. That's really cool. And then I also remembered you, there's these things where you can write like your, not wish, I guess. Like a or prayer maybe, kind of? Yeah, a prayer. 
And I remember you said, that you, you, again, this is a business. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a Bitcoin to whatever number or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One <laughs> of the uh, one of the prayers is basically, I, I like wrote down something. You just write it down. You put it in a, a pile with some others. And apparently they pray it over it or something. But like one was definitely like <laughs> something to do with Bitcoin. It's just like, okay, like, good. I'm glad you did that. Like, why not? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's business. Funny. It yeah. tracks. If you're going to uh, put that somewhere, that's the place. And you know what? I never, did you ever get tired of the red gates? I always thought no. they were cool. <laughs> yeah, me too. I felt the same way. I, they I, were I think... hundreds. And that's the thing that I was most shocked by. I'm like, okay, yeah, the Tory gates. And then it's like, wow, there are so many. I, w- I mean, there might have been thousands of those. Because there I were so there were many. Lots. It's crazy. They were like, so close walked, together. How long did we walk up, up the, the trail? Like two hours, maybe? Something like that, yeah. The whole time, this like stuff, like so they were staggered sometimes, but they were so they it's constant the whole time. Yeah, for sure. And it was also interesting. They were different sizes mm-hmm. uh, and like different conditions. Some looked older and some looked newer. Right. You, know, you could see some, some of like the paint peeling or yes. whatever. Yes. And we saw somebody like working on it and stuff. Oh, right. And some of them were just like stumps. Like I remember there was yeah. a few that were like, I don't know if they fell over I feel like it was just it was a really interesting balance because we've been thinking there, there is something to be said for like oh something that feels its age but then there, there but i think one of the first things i noticed there was like the shade of red and like the buildings down there just so vivid and bright and like it's really it, pretty. almost yeah. neon or something and so it's like well this can't be that old yeah and yeah i think we learned that they were like they were working on it but it but like some of them were older looking and i think it's a kind of a cool balance to see both Mm -hmm. which is kind of like in general a lot of the japan experience i think was this balance of like new and old which is really interesting definitely yeah let me see is there anything else Uh, i mean there's awaji island oh yeah island was uh (laughs) Really cool. I, I think, as, obviously, as a Godzilla nerd, that I'm going to that resonated yeah. with me zip lining into Godzilla's mouth. I've told more people about that than maybe anything on the trip, just because it is such a such a funny it's thing shocking. to say. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, oh yeah, I zip lined into Godzilla's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dream, yeah. I can corroborate as a Godzilla enjoyer uh, yeah. that uh, it was very fun. Yeah. And then there's like a museum that's like, I thought it was just going to be some shitty, like, you know, not shitty, but like small little thing. But they had, you know, some s- multiple suits that were from the movies and like all these like dioramas and uh, like a, a store and all sorts of like really cool stuff around there that wasn't just mm-hmm. the um, zip line. So that was yeah. like, that was a really cool experience. It was very, it was funny because I do think that we had incredible, like, five star service anywhere we went at any of the any of the places we went in Japan everyone was so in, in retail was so yep. attentive and uh-huh. nice but when we went there it truly did feel like I was back in America it was like disaffected teens who did not yep. want to be there yep and basically the first thing you do is you, you go in and watch this like bespoke film that's made yeah. for the theme the godzilla theme park using shin godzilla digital asset stuff like it, it was pretty looked pretty solid it looked cool it yeah looked good um and uh the it's basically so basically you're supposed to watch this movie and then an attendant comes in and i guess leads you to the next part of the thing <laughs> well the movie finished and we sat there for what felt like two minutes I, like, I, yeah i would say at least two minutes i would yeah. say more <laughs> like okay uh i guess we're, we're just talking at first you outside? know it's like whatever but yeah and they're like oh. and as soon as we did then someone like rushes out Whoa! yeah yeah we actually went outside i think it was it was even there was even more of a delay because we went outside and there were sheets that we we're supposed to sign for like release forms for the zip line yeah. or whatever so uh-huh. we started look we started reading them and then when someone came out like hey did you okay and we we thought we were supposed to do this. We we picked up some cards and things like that. Yeah. Uh-huh. We needed to use them later, which we did. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Was, oh, okay. You already got it. Great. <laughs> yeah. Even the and it, people were were not very. They're just like, uh, they kind of rolling was, their eyes. This was like midday on a mid afternoon on a weekday. Yes, so I think this yes. is so, why it was so funny because yes. like 
there was no line. There were no people here for this. So it was no. just like they were just like otherwise just you know f-ing off and talking to each other. I'm sure yeah. it's like we were the only customers, there. right? And fully, basically, the things were movie zip line and then you do this like gun shooting game yeah this really weird thing where you're shooting godzilla cells yes and nobody there was, was no there. one there. no one was there at all so we're like i guess this is how it works uh-huh you just take these gun props and, and then there's like a like this an area for pictures and there's like a crate with like props and you're like nobody I there guess, either i guess we'll just take stuff and <laughs> yes yes whatever and they didn't like we had we were wearing all this gear and stuff and we're like, can we like take the helmets off at least <laughs> for the pictures? <laughs> yeah, because the examples they showed, like, here's the photo zone. People were not wearing their safety right. gear. So yeah, like, well, where, where do we put it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we ended up wearing it and then just walking around with it the whole time. But yeah, yeah, so funny. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, um, it was very fun. I, I, I wanted, I, I, that was something I had wanted to do from the beginning of the trip, and I'm glad that. Glad that we did for sure. Um, same question about food, uh, as in Tokyo, as in Kyoto. Um, do you have a favorite food from Kyoto? Oh man, Oof. I thought that making like splitting this up would make it dip, make it easier because I was mm. like, uh, what's favorite? The gyoza was good. That gyoza that we stood in line for, I really, yeah. I, I really wound up liking that a lot. That one was good. Um, it was like not just vegetarian friendly, but had like multiple really interesting, good vegetarian options that I also would be interested in in general. Right. So I think like a lot of vegetarian places, there's like, well, here's your, you've got two options. And it's not, it's like at least one of them is something that I ordinarily like wouldn't even like. You know? <laughs> right, right. It's like you're, you're just like, like, well, it's, I may not like it, but it's something that I can eat. <laughs> but this place has like stuff that I would ordinarily be just like looking at it on the like, menu. Mm-hmm. I would be excited to order. So, oh, okay. I had several of those and they were all good. Nice. Yeah. yeah there yeah. was a fun atmosphere there. We definitely, it was a late night and we were like, we need to eat. And this is one of the times where I think, I don't remember if we looked this one up or if this was on our list. It was. But, Okay, but we we got there and it was a line around the like several, at least 12 people deep. And we got there and nobody was moving and nobody, nobody ever moved. And we're like, man, this place is going to close before. But we did eventually get inside and it was it wasn't a place where they're trying to get people in and out. They're encouraging you to buy more drinks and Mm -hmm. they really wanted you to hang. Yeah, which is crazy for their business. <laughs> yeah, a weird business model. Yeah, but it was very good. Uh, what about you? What about your favorite food? I really liked you found an Amakase place that was oh, really yeah. good. They had like a big, as opposed to the other places, like one chef kind of cooking everything and handed to you. This was a little bit more like a kitchen. They had this yeah. big charcoal grill in the back um and um just really good service and uh some really tasty things there um i really like they had this one early one it was like these two full miniature fish that were fried that they turned into um i think and the sake there was really good right yeah the, we had, there was some really good sake there yeah that was like like some of the that was the best sake i'd ever had for sure i haven't had 100%. a lot of sake but damn that was really good we definitely had quite a bit on the trip i forgot to say this in tokyo but we went to um we the the most garish bar that we went to was we were walking around where our second hotel was and there was this one place it was like an english pub yeah it was blasting they had the acdc youtube channel on repeat in there (laughs) and uh a bunch of drunk (laughs) businessmen were inside i remember like one guy oh yeah coming up to me like hey i wear glasses you wear glasses we're friends or whatever <laughs> and then later when i went to go get us me and kit more drinks mm-hmm. he tried to introduce me to another guy who very clearly <laughs> also did not know this man but he also had glasses he also had glasses so he was kind of like we should all talk yeah yeah exactly. we're all friends now because we yes. all have glasses yes exactly <laughs> uh, but we did have we, we even had sake there yeah uh, and also, that's if if we if either of us were big drinkers, uh, the yin would have helped us out a lot there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, true. 
but yeah, we, um, I like the Omakase place a lot. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, I also, uh, one breakfast, there was like this all like, uh, one that I went to on my own one breakfast morning where it was just like this one granny by herself in there. <laughs> They're watching her and her friend were watching a documentary on like bears. Uh, oh like yeah. Some, some news report on like bear attacks. <laughs> And it just felt like very like you're going to do it was like the menu was like had old polaroids that she'd taken and stuff like that mm -hmm. and then stuff like that Amazing. Um, but and then i also did like um on the last night i had my hot udon yeah which was yeah that, um it was just like this kind of like rock and roll bar where i sat next to a guy from california and we talked for a little bit but um mm. i had a hot udon there and it was very good yeah i'm pulling up that the, the list that we made yes. on miro Yes. Uh, yeah, I was trying to remember all the stuff that I had on here. Both me and Kinder list people, so we have several kind of like whenever we'd be like, "What was the thing that you liked?" It's like, "All right, well, let's make a list about it." Yeah, I was looking at um at this thing trying to figure out like I was trying to remember what would have been my top thing in Kyoto, and I think I was I was accurate. Okay. Although, yeah. like on this list, I have the Arashiyama ice cream pretty high, but in retrospect yeah I, don't, I, I think i would drop that down yeah bit. me and kate were talking about how ranking things in retrospect after being a week a few weeks away from it versus like in the moment you know yeah because i think stuff like not like a really sweet ice cream when we're in japan and haven't had anything that's like rich mm -hmm. you know that's that that hits the spot but i mean like yeah. in retro it's it's because we hadn't had anything exactly you know? it's contextual yeah well, I guess to talk about that a little bit and, and wrap up, is there any big takeaways you have from the trip after having been away from it for as long as we've been a couple of weeks at this point? Um, well, I, I don't know if it's like a, a specific takeaway, but it is one of those things where like the further you are away from it, the less you think about any of the stress points like mm. missing trains or whatever and i just think about all of the amazing experiences and things that we saw and did did and had food and everything so um yeah i have nothing but positive memories and thoughts about it um i feel and i also i don't know if this was part of what we recorded or not but we we're talking about like is this something that we would, what would we do different or mm. is there something we would do, we would change or swap out? Uh, and we talked like, maybe we might've spent, you know, a little more time in Kyoto versus Tokyo, like one day or something. Um, but even that, like, it's hard to know, like, what would you swap out? What would yeah. not, what would you remove? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard people talk about, you know, some of the things that um, were really meaningful to them, like, you know, climbing Mount Fuji or whatever, which we did not do. And they're like, if I were to go again, yeah, that would be on the list. But it's also like, if we were to do that, that's a full day. What goes, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't know. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I, there's nothing that I would be like, oh, I, I can easily take this away. I feel like I, totally agree. I feel like we, all of these days were, um, even the ones that were relaxed and stuff that were they were full. There were things that we wanted to do and we got to experience. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's like something that, you know, go back someday and do those other things but i feel really happy about uh what we did and saw mm -hmm. yeah i definitely feel like sometimes i've visited places and been like okay like i don't never necessarily need to come go back you know what i mean but i definitely feel like i felt like i felt very satisfied with the trip and i felt like i got everything that i wanted to um while still also there's still being a lot of stuff that I would still want to do, you know? Yeah, sure. And to your point, I don't think I'd change anything as far as like, um, I don't regret anything. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I also learned that I'm like a much louder snore than I realize. <laughs> I guess likewise, I honestly. <laughs> but on the back end of the trip, we mostly had separate rooms, but in all of Kyoto, we had shared a room and we definitely mm -hmm. were both like, Oh boy, like <laughs> no, so separate rooms is good. Uh, but that's yes. also how are you supposed to know that? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. But yeah, I don't I wouldn't I don't regret anything. I loved it was like you I totally agree with everything that you said as far as like the the bits that were like mm, more mm, maybe not even stressful, but like the bits that felt like 
a little bit more anxious about yeah just kind of disappear and you remember the all the fun stuff which yeah. i definitely i'm much i'm normally a much more like low-key traveler than what i did so i appreciate going with you on the trip because i think we did a lot more than i normally would do and so that was nice yeah uh i hope i didn't push you in anything <laughs> no, like, that's I, my I, natural no 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 being. i uh i think that uh like even asking for solo days and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Like, I think when I need space, I, I could be articulate about it. And yeah, I do think that like separate rooms would help with that too. Yeah. Yes. 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 It's a good, it's, <laughs> it's hard because you have to swallow the extra cost, but I think that ultimately it is worth it. Yeah, definitely. It was a really good time. Um, it made me feel like, uh, Oh, this is what a uh, a city can look like. Um, it was incredibly clean. I don't. You've never understand. seen a city before. No, it. I mean, a uh, kind of. It, it <laughs> felt like. Oh, this is like. Uh, how is it this clean? How are people so like uh, not yelling at each other? Yeah, yeah. I heard oh, how a civilization can be. <laughs> I, I mean, for real. Yeah. Well, I had a great time with you. Me on the too. Trip. Likewise, absolutely. Yeah. It's our first time traveling together. That's always yeah. risky. Yeah, I feel like I've most of my traveling has been with my parents in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, how do I compare? How do I rank? You got to rank mom, dad, Houston. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. This is tough. This is tough. Yeah. Um, I feel like like I think the the main way that I would rank on on is how well the other person looks. Sub- oh. <laughs> No, how well they subvert their needs to prioritize mine. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's a really right. good criteria for a travel. I think companion. so. And healthy. Yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was really fun. And I think I was like, I would definitely like to do that again, you know, mm-hmm. have those kinds of like, it's a, it's a fun thing to do. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, is there any, I guess we could just wave bye. Okay. <laughs> All right. I yeah. think is there anything else? I don't know. I, I can't think of anything. I mean, I like. I mean, I we know. didn't really we didn't really talk about the Ryokan, but like, I don't know if I have that much more to say outside of it was like pretty. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, real. It was great. I mean, we, I think we we talked about it in the or on, you did it on the voiceover and stuff. Yeah. And we had kind of covered it a lot, and I think I talked about the the slippers. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the write-up to the Ryokan was really, like, magical. It was really cool because going from Tokyo, the obviously huge metropolitan space to, like, from bullet train to to essentially just, like, up a mountain into back in time. Yeah, Uh, I didn't realize that it would be quite so (laughs) nature-y. That's such a stupid way of putting it. But I think knowing that it, it, like, I feel like there are certain places that you can travel to that are very nature centric and like mm-hmm. you're like, oh, obviously this is going to be like really, you know, you're in, yeah. a fo- in a forest or something. Right. And you don't think that in a city like this mm-hmm. and let alone to be like that deep into a forest. Like, how yeah. is there room for that much forest I mean, in Kyoto? You know? Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And so like uh, that's just like as we were getting closer and closer and it started to feel more and more like that. It was. Just, it's a really bizarre and and really uh, awesome experience. Yeah, some of the most beautiful grounds, uh, especially yeah. a, a, certainly of a hotel that I've ever been. Yeah, it exactly. Felt, it yeah. felt like a resort or something like that. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I can't think of any any other hotels that uh, could compare, except for obviously the Godzilla room. Of course. <laughs> yeah, which also felt very naturey. Of course. Can you imagine if there was a Godzilla style Ryokan that was like it looked like it was from like the original Godzilla movie and there's like remnants of I don't know, it's just a smashed house, I guess is what I'm describing. Yeah, I mean yeah, also post you know, post nuclear bomb stuff. Oh you know, like okay. a lot of wreckage. Right. Like right, that could right. be a themed Ryokan. Right. No, yeah, we could have a uh like it's kind of like a Godzilla minus one escape room. And yes. <laughs> Yeah, great you know, idea. I mean, kind of the slums where the uh, the main character lives for the majority of the movie. Yes, yeah, that would be fun. That would it would be, be fun. Experience. It'd be, it would a be good, fun experience. Immersive experience. Yeah, I'm just looking for some more immersive experiences, please. Thank you, Thank you very much. Because my life. <laughs> <laughs>
That's right. That is so true. Oh, <laughs> Big fat yawn. All right. Well, thanks for doing this wrap up with me, Kent. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm sure we uh, we missed stuff, but yeah yeah well, yeah well we'll get it next time yeah next time where yeah we'll, we'll do watch out for the director's cut uh, which is three hours longer than this yeah yes for sure and next time we go to japan together we can do another one of these and right. talk about the stuff we forgot in this one right we should do a commentary on the commentary right <laughs> yes yes yeah definitely yeah okay <laughs> all right it up Bye. All right. See, I, uh, I'm. I think it'll save to my computer, and I will upload it to the drive. Oh, uh, let me let me reframe this. I'm doing the buy for the video. Oh, and okay. Then we can like. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I should have. I should have contextualized that. Right. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.